Are you feeling overwhelmed by life's relentless demands and challenges? Do you find yourself constantly caught in a cycle of worrying about what the future holds or lamenting over the past, unable to seize the joy of the present moment? If these questions resonate with you, know that you're not alone. Many of us are on a seemingly endless quest for peace and balance in a world that feels increasingly chaotic and uncontrollable. The pursuit of tranquility amidst turmoil is a common thread that unites us all, each of us seeking a way to navigate our emotions and life's unpredictable waves with grace and resilience. You found a guide that promises not just fleeting relief, but a profound transformation in how you confront and interact with the myriad aspects of life. This guide is not about sidestepping your problems or cloaking them in pretense. Rather, it's about arming you with the wisdom and tools to face life's adversities head on, fostering a sense of inner serenity and strength that may have previously seemed unattainable. At the heart of this guide is the ancient yet remarkably relevant philosophy of Stoicism. Stoicism provides a robust framework for personal freedom and inner peace, teaching us how to maintain our composure and integrity in the face of life's trials and tribulations. It shows us how to detach our happiness from external conditions and instead find contentment and resilience within ourselves. Through clear, accessible language and practical steps, this guide will introduce you to the core principles of Stoicism, such as understanding what is within our control and accepting what is not, cultivating virtue as the highest good, and practicing mindfulness in our daily lives. You'll discover how Stoicism can help you reduce stress, enhance your relationships, and lead a life that is more intentional and fulfilling. As we delve into Stoicism's rich teachings, you'll find strategies for managing negative emotions, techniques for building resilience, and insights for achieving personal growth. This guide is your invitation to explore a philosophy that has guided countless individuals through the ages toward a life of peace, purpose, and freedom. Welcome to a journey that has the potential not only to change how you view the world, but more importantly, how you view and conduct yourself within it. Together, let's embark on this path of stoic wisdom, learning how to navigate life's storms with dignity and poise, and moving towards a future where true freedom and tranquility are not just ideals, but realities we live by every day. Disrespect is a common foe that challenges us throughout our lives. Emotionally, it can shake us up and make us feel upset and hurt. What if I told you that there is an old philosophy that can help us navigate these rough times with wisdom and grace? Welcome to our journey into Stoicism. In this lesson, we'll look at 10 useful rules that can help you deal with disrespect. First, let me paint you a picture of what Stoicism is all about. Picture yourself in a busy cafe where someone cuts in front of you. You feel a surge of anger and frustration. What if I told you there's a smart and calm way to deal with this disrespect? Follow along as we go through these stoic lessons one by one. First lesson, keep your cool. The most important lesson in stoic philosophy is to keep your cool, which is like staying calm in a storm. Imagine that someone is undermining your work. Instead of getting angry, Stoicism says to realize that what's really upsetting you is not what they're doing, but how you're reacting to it. You are in charge when you realize that your point of view is what makes you feel things. By giving you the power to choose not to be disturbed, this Stoic practice helps you find inner peace and grow. Maintaining your cool helps you handle disrespect with grace and strength, just like a strong ship can handle rough seas. Second lesson, think about who you are. How to look at yourself like a Stoic. Stoicism encourages introspection and self-reflection when faced with disrespect. Picture a situation in which a friend criticizes the choices you make. Instead of reacting right away, 
Stoic self-examination makes you ask important questions like, are they telling the truth? What did you do that help? By looking at feedback with an open mind, Stoicism teaches humility and the chance to grow as a person. It's like looking at yourself in the mirror and asking, can I do better? Stoic art keeps you from acting on impulse and guides your actions with wisdom and care. Self-examination is the key to not only surviving problems, but thriving in them, which is what Stoic resilience is all about. Concentrate on virtue. Lesson 3. The good way for Stoics to respond. When people treat you badly, Stoicism says to use virtue as your compass. Imagine that a co-worker disagrees with your ideas. Stoicism encourages you to act with wisdom and integrity rather than reacting emotionally. Focusing on virtue makes you a strong guardian who stays true to yourself even when things get tough. Stoicism says that virtue, which includes things like wisdom and courage, is the highest good. If you follow the Stoic path, you can handle rude people with grace. Instead of ignoring rudeness, you should respond in a way that fits with Stoic values and helps you grow as a person. Fourth lesson, stop talking when you need to. Stoicism can help you control your emotions. Learning how to pause is a powerful Stoic skill that can help you deal with disrespect. Imagine someone putting down your accomplishments. Stoicism says to take a deliberate pause instead of letting your anger decide what you do. This pause turns into a healing haven that helps you take back control of your feelings and choices. You can handle rude people with calm and well thought out responses if you think about what happens when you act without thinking. Stoic teachings about pausing are like having a set of emotional tools that give you the strength to deal with upsetting situations with wisdom, self-control and resilience. It means having the poise of a real Stoic and keeping a steady hand through life's rough spots. Fiveth lesson, show empathy, bringing about understanding and grace. According to Stoic wisdom, learning to show empathy is a powerful way to deal with disrespect. Picture a situation in which a friend says something hurtful. Stoicism gives you the courage to put yourself in someone else's shoes and try to see things from their point of view. This will help you feel sorry for them and understand that their rude behavior might be caused by their fears or insecurities, not an attack on you personally. When you take an empathetic approach, you can respond with understanding instead of anger. Lesson 6 make peace with acceptance. How Stoics deal with being disrespected. Stoicism teaches the valuable lesson of accepting criticism when it comes your way. Think about a time when a co-worker sabotages your efforts. Accepting disrespect as a part of life you can't change is what Stoicism says you should do instead of getting angry. Acceptance is not a passive state. It is a deep source of strength. Realizing that what other people do doesn't define your worth makes you a strong protector of your inner peace. Instead of wasting your time and energy trying to change others, Stoicism advises you to focus on improving yourself. 7. Have fun with it. Being calm when someone treats you badly is a Stoic art. From the tapestry of Stoic wisdom, it seems that using humor is a smart way to deal with disrespect. Imagine that someone talks down to your accomplishments. Stoicism tells you to respond with a funny comment or a playful action, which can make a tough situation more fun. This Stoic method is not meant to downplay how bad disrespect is. It's just a way to keep your emotions in check. By dealing with the problems in life with a sense of humor, you show that you can control your emotions and act in a sensible way. Lesson 8. Set Clear Limits. The Stoic Art of Confident Pride. Setting clear limits is a cornerstone in the Stoic toolkit for dealing rudeness. Imagine a case where someone constantly crosses the line in their opinions. 
Stoicism teaches us to speak assertively, making it known when something is wrong and expressing our standards for polite treatment. This stoic practice is not about responding in anger, but keeping calm while expressing our self-worth. Lesson 9. Choose Forgiveness the Stoic gift to ourselves. In the world of Stoicism, forgiveness becomes a strong gift we place upon ourselves when faced with rudeness. Picture a situation where someone's words sting deeply. Stoicism leads you to choose forgiveness, not as a surrender or weakness, but as a statement of strength and resilience. It's a Stoic idea that we can't control others' deeds, but we can control our responses. Forgiveness within the Stoic structure is a freedom from the shackles of bad feelings like anger and bitterness. Lesson 10. Change your perspective. The Stoic lens of resilience. In the Stoic journey of handling disrespect, adopting a different perspective becomes a potent tool. Imagine disrespect as a passing gust in the vast landscape of life. Stoicism teaches you to view these situations objectively, understanding that the disrespect we face often reflects the ignorance, insecurity or weakness of others. But by embracing this stoic lens, we choose not to be ensnared by the barbs of disrespect. Instead, we navigate the storm with detachment, either ignoring, forgiving or learning from these encounters. This shift redirects our focus towards what truly matters, our goals, values, and virtues, making us resilient warriors capable of confronting life's challenges with unwavering serenity. Stoicism, in essence, becomes a philosophy not just of enduring, but of thriving, even in the face of disrespect and adversity. In conclusion, navigating disrespect through the lens of Stoicism offers a profound and transformative approach to life's challenges. By maintaining composure, reflecting on ourselves, and concentrating on virtue, Stoicism empowers us to respond with wisdom and grace. Learning to pause, practicing empathy, and embracing acceptance become invaluable tools for emotional resilience and understanding. The Stoic art of using humor brings lightness to situations that could otherwise be laden with tension. Setting clear boundaries, choosing forgiveness, and changing our perspective highlight the stoic commitment to assertive dignity, self-mastery, and resilience in the face of adversity. These lessons collectively form a comprehensive guide to not just endure disrespect, but to transcend it, demonstrating that stoicism is not merely a philosophy but a way of life, a pathway to inner peace, strength, and enduring grace. In this modern age, there is a vast landscape of the internet where kindness is celebrated as the ultimate virtue. It's a digital realm where a simple click can connect us with people across the globe. But what if I told you that in our modern pursuit of being the kindest version of ourselves, we might be overlooking a crucial lesson from the wise ancients. Imagine this, you're navigating through a sea of heart emojis and uplifting messages, and suddenly you hit a wave of unexpected challenges. I'll now unravel eight unexpected ways, excessive kindness, yes, too much of this noble trait, might just throw us off balance. Lesson 1. Unrealistic expectations for people. Imagine you're at a party and your friend mentions they're moving next weekend. In your eagerness to be kind, you volunteer to help with the entire move, even though your own schedule is already packed. This act, although well-intentioned, might lead to unrealistic expectations for people to reciprocate in the same way. The stoic lesson here is to know the size of your cup, meaning understanding your limits and not overcommitting. It's about being kind to yourself first, ensuring your actions align with your capacity. By setting realistic expectations, you avoid disappointment and maintain a sense of balance in your life. If you always expect others to be as kind and considerate as you are, you may end up feeling disappointed and hurt 
when they don't meet your expectations. This can lead to resentment and strain your relationships. Lesson 2. Enabling Comfort Zones Picture a scenario where you've constantly helped a friend with their tasks, making their life more comfortable. Over time, they start taking your assistance for granted, and the expectation builds that you'll handle everything for them. This aligns with Stoicism's emphasis on moderation and avoiding habits that harm mental health. The Stoics would advise against enabling others' comfort zones excessively as it disrupts the balance between selflessness and self-care. It's a reminder to be kind, but not at the expense of allowing others to neglect their responsibilities or, in turn, compromising your own well-being. This can lead to a cycle of dependency and prevent both you and your friends from reaching your full potential. Lesson 3. Taking on too much. Imagine you're at a gathering and a friend mentions they're moving next weekend. In your eagerness to be kind, you volunteer to help with the entire move, even though your own schedule is already packed. This act, although well-intentioned, might lead to unrealistic expectations for people to reciprocate in the same way. The stoic lesson here is to know the size of your cup, meaning understanding your limits and not overcommitting. It's about being kind to yourself first, ensuring your actions align with your capacity. By setting realistic expectations, you avoid disappointment and maintain a sense of balance in your life. Lesson 4. Always trying to make everyone happy. Many of us fall into the age-old desire to be liked by everyone, saying yes when we want to say no and constantly juggling masks to fit in. This people-pleasing may seem like kindness, but it often stems from our own insecurities. The Stoics, however, teach us the virtue of authenticity. They emphasize being true to yourself, understanding that you can't control others' opinions. The lesson is to focus on living authentically, attracting the right people who appreciate you for who you are. It's a reminder that constant approval isn't necessary. Being true to yourself is the most genuine form of kindness. If you constantly prioritize others' happiness over your own, you may end up neglecting your own needs and desires, leading to feelings of resentment and dissatisfaction. Lesson 5. Neglect of personal goals. Picture this. You have personal aspirations like learning a new skill or pursuing a passion, but you constantly find yourself putting these goals aside to help others. While kindness is virtuous, the Stoic teaching here is about finding balance. Neglecting your personal goals may lead to feelings of frustration and unfulfillment. The Stoics emphasize the importance of living by reason and virtue, setting limits and prioritizing your responsibilities. It's a gentle reminder to be kind to yourself, ensuring that your acts of kindness don't come at the expense of your own growth and aspirations. If you're always putting others' needs before your own, you might find that you're not making progress toward your own dreams and ambitions. This can lead to feelings of regret and unfulfillment. Lesson 6. Perception of Weakness Imagine you're always available to help others, saying yes to every request and never setting boundaries. While this might seem like extreme kindness, the Stoics caution against it as it can lead others to perceive you as weak. Stoicism encourages strength and self-discipline. The lesson here is to practice moderation in your kindness, showing others that you are committed to your responsibilities and ideals. By setting limits and practicing self-discipline, you earn respect instead of being seen as weak. It's a reminder that being kind doesn't mean compromising your own strength and principles. Lesson 7. Attracting takers, not givers. Picture a scenario where your kindness knows no bounds. You're always there to help, offering your time, resources and support. While this might seem like the epijackie of generosity, the Stoic wisdom advises moderation. Giving excessively without discernment can attract people who only want to take and seldom reciprocate. 
The Stoics guide us to be wise in choosing whom to help, maintaining a balance between selflessness and discernment. It's a reminder that not everyone values your kindness equally, and practicing moderation safeguards you from becoming a magnet for those who only seek to benefit without giving in return. Lesson 8. Needing Others' Approval In the age of social media, it's easy to fall into the trap of seeking constant validation for our acts of kindness. Imagine sharing every good deed online, not just for the joy of helping, but for the likes and approval it garners. The Stoic teaching here is to focus on the intrinsic value of your actions rather than external validation. Marcus Aurelius wisely noted, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. Seeking approval can dilute the authenticity of your kindness. The Stoics encourage us to do good for its own sake, fostering genuine virtue rather than chasing external acknowledgement. It's a profound lesson in understanding that true kindness lies in the purity of our intentions, not in the applause it receives. In the journey through the pitfalls of excessive kindness illuminated by Stoicism, we find a timeless wisdom that speaks to the delicate balance required in our acts of benevolence. Whether it's the lesson of knowing the size of our cup and avoiding unrealistic expectations, understanding the importance of authenticity and not always aiming to make everyone happy, or recognizing the dangers of neglecting personal goals and the perception of weakness. Stoicism guides us toward a harmonious and measured approach to kindness. At its core, the Stoic philosophy encourages a balance and thoughtful application of kindness. It urges us to be considerate of our own limits, set boundaries, and avoid extremes that might lead to unfulfillment or exploitation. The cautionary tales of attracting takers, not givers, and the perils of seeking constant approval remind us that true virtue lies in the intrinsic value of our actions rather than in the external validation or expectations of others. Ultimately, the Stoic teachings on kindness serve as a compass guiding us toward a path where our benevolence is genuine, sustainable and aligned with our own well-being. According to Marcus Aurelius, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Do you know how frustrating it is when your mind is full of noise, when you can't make up your mind, or when you overthink and can't move? Everybody has been there, repeating talks, guessing what will happen, and trying to figure out an endless list of what-ifs in their minds. Allow us to face this problem directly by presenting 10 useful stoic methods for getting rid of excessive thinking. Imagine an outside force pushing against your overthinking. When you're not looking, overthinking can sneak up on you like fog on a clear day. It begins as a single fear or thought and grows quickly until it catches you off guard. In our fast-paced world, where information comes at us like hail in a storm, millions of people deal with this. Lots of what if, what next, and what could have been thoughts fill our minds. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman Stoic philosopher king, said, The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This brings us to our first technique, seeing overthinking as something outside of you. That doesn't mean making your thoughts into enemies, it just means realizing that they are not who you are. Their presence disturbs your peace. Visualize those bothersome thoughts as clouds moving over a mountain. You're that mountain, majestic and unmovable, standing strong as the clouds pass by. How do you stop these invaders? Stoicism tells us to watch without getting involved. Picture putting these thoughts in a bubble and watching them float. In addition to making them less important, this mental practice helps you remember that feelings are fleeting. They can only ruin your peace if you let them have it. Using this visualization technique regularly can help you separate yourself from these thoughts 
and let them go before they become a storm. More practice in separating yourself from this constant thinking makes it easier to understand that you are more than just your thoughts. This difference protects you like earplugs do in a loud crowd. With daily practice, the effort gets better because it's conscious and ongoing. Imagine that the thought is noise, not important, and not part of who you are when you notice that you are starting to think too much. You'll avoid overthinking and regain mental peace by doing this, one step at a time. Manage your energy by changing where it's going. Have you ever noticed that your mind becomes stuck in a never-ending loop of what-ifs and worst-case scenarios? It's mentally draining to keep thinking about the same fears over and over again. It's like endlessly opening new computer tabs and each one playing a movie at full volume. You can't find the stop button. In today's world, where there is a lot of pressure to stay on top of everything, people often find themselves thinking too much. To clear out your thoughts, just like you would clean up a messy desk. Redirecting your mental energy isn't just about finding peace of mind, it's also about regaining control and turning down the noise of what could be so you can enjoy what is. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about the future. This wise advice is the basis for regaining control by refocusing your energy. Get centered in the present moment to stop overthinking. Whatever you're working on, no matter how small, keep your mind on it and put all of your energy into finishing it. Changing your attention brings you back to the present moment and stops you from thinking about what-ifs in the future. Engage in a task that needs your full attention. This is an easy but deep practical application. It could be as easy as cleaning up your workspace, going for a walk, or getting lost in a book. These actions need the present moment, not yesterday or tomorrow. It's not just a distraction when you tell your thoughts to match your deeds. You're actually controlling where your energy goes. Stoicism is not about ignoring your thoughts. It's about controlling them by picking which ones to focus on. You're working on your mental control. Avoiding overthinking completely is not the goal. That's too high of a standard. Knowing when your thoughts aren't helpful and having the tools to change them are the goals. Using this ability to refocus more often makes your mind stronger and more adaptable, just like working out a muscle. Wave by wave, careful action and present will help you control the crushing tide of overthinking. Accept that things change over time and regularly let go. People often get stuck in a mental loop where they keep thinking about the past or worrying about the future. At this point, you're probably thinking too much and your thoughts are sticking around for longer than intended. This problem affects everyone, whether they are a student worried about a test, a worker worried about a presentation, or just someone trying to fall asleep while their mind is racing at 100 miles per hour. Even though our minds are racing, Epictetus's words can help us relax. He who fears death will never do anything worthy of a man who is alive. This may sound like a heavy quote, but it's actually about the idea of change, which is at the heart of Stoicism. This includes the thoughts that don't seem to go away. Thinking too much can make us hold on to our thoughts like they are fixed parts of our lives. Adopting impermanence means realizing that thoughts are temporary and don't last forever. Finding this understanding can give you hope when you feel stuck in too much thinking. Easing into the idea of change in real life means doing more, letting go. For mental cleansing, you let go of thoughts that don't help you. Imagine a river, and each thought is a leaf floating on the water. They might also look like clouds to you, always shifting, moving on. In addition to giving you instantaneous relief, this image helps you understand more deeply that the nature of thinking is to change. Doing this every day can change the way you interact with your thinking. Allowing them to leave is what's important, not pushing them to. Lending up isn't giving up. It takes courage to let go. 
You're deciding not to let useless thoughts take up free space in your mind. If you practice this regularly, you'll notice that your mind has more room and quietness that was there all along, but you couldn't hear it because you were thinking too much. Embracing change isn't just a method, it's a way of life that leads to more peace and presence. Start a worry time. It's normal to have fears in the back of our minds, like the hum of a refrigerator, always there, sometimes hard to register, but definitely there. Anytime, these fears can take over our minds, even when we're trying to sleep, focus on work, or have fun with friends. It's like these worries are not invited players who won't leave our mind performance. Epictetus, a Stoic teacher, said, If you want to get better, be happy to be thought foolish and stupid. This quote may seem off-topic, but it's a strong lesson to put our peace of mind ahead of worrying out of fear of appearing naive or careless. Establishing a worry period is a smart way to give these worries a stage time, but only during the encore and not the main act. Schedule a time every day, like 20 minutes in the afternoon, to focus on these worries. At this time, focus on your fears, looking at them closely, trying to figure out where they come from, and maybe even writing them down. What's driving you crazy? How probable are these events? things you can do to stop them. During this focused session, we often realize that many of our fears are like shadows. They look big, but when you look them in the eye, they don't really mean anything. Additionally, this method teaches your mind that worrying is only appropriate at certain times and places, not all day, every day. After the worry time is over, you move on. You have given your fears their time and now you ignore them. Creating these separate areas will help you take back control of your day. That's not the point. You can't stop worrying totally. Although, keeping your fears in check can lessen their effect on your life. Placing your thoughts where they belong and enjoying the peace of an organized area is like using this method. Life will probably feel a little lighter and more fun when you don't let your fears run wild. Separate your complex thoughts into manageable steps. Being overly concerned can make us feel like we're carrying a huge rock. Our fears are as big as the world, and they're holding us down. This feeling isn't just ours. It's a common human situation made worse by living in a world that expects great success in all areas of life, including relationships, work, personal growth, and social standing. As much as we want to do well, the pressure to do so can freeze us with fear and indecision, making us focus on what might happen instead of what we are doing. Today's society is result-oriented, and the goal often excuses the means. This can make us think that if the trip is unclear, it's not worth going on. However, Epictetus's stoic quote gives us a clear instruction. Don't explain your philosophy live it. Stoicism teaches us to concentrate on our actions and goals instead of the results we can't change. This doesn't mean we shouldn't set goals or strive for great things, but it does mean that what really matters is how hard we work, how honest we are, and how we walk our road with virtue. Take this method into practice by consciously shifting your attention from thinking too much about what might happen to the effort itself whenever you notice yourself doing so. Check in with yourself. Are you providing the best quality? Are you acting with good intentions? Staying true to your values? Taking this method means being fully involved in the process, doing the work, and knowing that's all you have to do. Stressing effort can free us from the chains of too much thought. It lets us be in the present and do our best without holding back what might be making our experience less enjoyable. Our deeds become symbols of our character and commitment instead of just moves toward a goal. Through this change of perspective, you realize that your road is not just a way to get somewhere else. It is also a way to live a meaningful life and each step along the way is a success in and of itself. Replace your negative outlook with thanks. Our thoughts are tricky. 
they often lead us astray by making us think too much about what we don't have, what might go wrong, or what we nevertheless have to accomplish. This is an endless cycle that can make us feel tired and unhappy. Overthinking usually happens when we focus on the bad or the not yet in life, which makes the good that's already there seem less important. The Stoic philosopher Seneca said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about the future. This little piece of wisdom tells us to change our focus from lack to excess, from overthinking to thanks. Finding the worth in the present and the many gifts we miss when we're worried about what's to come is what this meditation is about. Practicing thanks gets us out of our mental ruts and firmly planted in the present moment where life is actually happening. Starting today, make this change by listing three things you're thankful for. Not fancy, just sincere is enough. The comfort of your favorite jacket, a tasty cup of coffee, or a message from a friend could all be the catalyst. By doing this easy thing, you can break out of the loop of overthinking and start to appreciate what is happening in your life right now. In addition to blocking out the noise of overthinking, Focusing on thanks can also make your daily life better. When we are grateful, the good things in our lives become even more noticeable and our inner conversation can slowly change from one of lack to one of plenty. Looking at things from a different angle can change how you deal with problems in life over time, making them into chances to see and value what's already good in your life even more. That's not all. It's about building a base of happiness that can support you through the unavoidable ups and downs of life. Emphasize work over result. Thinking too much about the future, its outcomes, its what-ifs, and its endless chances of failure and disappointment often makes us overthink. This looking into the future can make us absolutely terrified and we may start to think about the possible outcomes of our actions instead of the actions themselves. Today's society is result-oriented and the goal often excuses the means. This can make us think that if the trip is unclear, it's not worth going on. However, Epictetus's stoic quote gives us a clear instruction. Don't explain your philosophy, live it. Stoicism teaches us to concentrate on our actions and goals instead of the results we can't change. This doesn't mean we shouldn't set goals or strive for great things, but it does mean that what really matters is how hard we work, how honest we are, and how we walk our road with virtue. Take this method into practice by consciously shifting your attention from thinking too much about what might happen to the effort itself whenever you notice yourself doing so. Check in with yourself. Are you providing the best quality? Are you acting with good intentions, staying true to your values? Taking this method means being fully involved in the process, doing the work, and knowing that's all you have to do. Stressing effort can free us from the chains of too much thought. It lets us be in the present and do our best without holding back what might be making our experience less enjoyable. Our deeds become symbols of our character and commitment instead of just moves toward a goal. Through this change of perspective, you realize that your road is not just a way to get somewhere else. It is also a way to live a meaningful life, and each step along the way is a success in and of itself. Try voluntarily feeling uncomfortable. When we're contemplating something that might be uncomfortable or different, our thoughts often take us into a vortex of overthinking. Over and over, we act out different situations, trying to guess what will happen and getting ready for every possible pain. Mentally practicing this can be tiring. When you stay in your comfort zone, you stop growing, and overthinking is the mastermind that keeps you locked up. According to Marcus Aurelius, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. This is similar to the Stoic philosophy of facing problems head-on instead of dodging them. Feeling uncomfortable on purpose can help us deal with uncertainty and stop overthinking. Small intentional acts that push us outside of our comfort zones 
teach us resilience and flexibility. Start small by doing something like taking a cold shower, sleeping without a pillow, or walking instead of driving to bring this into your routine. Disrupt your normal pattern and be with your thoughts without judging them. Doing this isn't a punishment. It's a way to show yourself that being uncomfortable isn't as scary as you think it is. Surprisingly, choosing to be uncomfortable can make you more comfortable with many parts of life. By doing what makes you uncomfortable on a regular basis, the new becomes known and your mind learns to calm down. Instead of reacting to change, it focuses on what you can control, how you react. When you see things from this powerful new angle, you stop overthinking and build inner strength that isn't affected by the ups and downs of life. Consider how short life is. An overthinking storm usually happens when we focus too much on the small details of our lives and lose sight of the bigger picture. Our minds get jumbled with what if this happens and what if that doesn't work out, which makes us lose it. Through this tiny lens, even the smallest problems can seem impossible to solve, taking up a lot of our brain room and energy. We are not given a short life, but we make it short, and we are not ill-supplied, but wasteful of it, as Seneca once said. This sobering lesson gives us courage to consider how short our lives really are. Every second you spend thinking too much is a slice of life you don't fully enjoying. Stoicism challenges us to consider whether our fears are really that important in the scheme of things. Overthinking can be avoided by regularly taking a step back and looking at our whole lives, realizing that many of the things that are bothering us are temporary and don't matter in the long run. A moment of silence and a reminder that life is short can help you deal with too many thoughts. Consider whether this moment of overthinking is really worth the little time you have. Thinking about how short life is makes us naturally rank our events and worries. This is not a call to be sad or uninterested. Instead, it's a reminder to enjoy the present and remain focused on what really matters. A strong remedy for overthinking, it brings our focus to the present, makes us value the present more, and lessens the weight of worries about the future. The shortness of life shouldn't make you anxious. Instead, it should be a blank sheet that you paint with the bright colors of present and active living. Find knowledge from other people. Sometimes our minds feel like a maze, with more confusion and too much thinking at each turn. We are trying to answer a problem, but the pieces keep getting bigger, which makes us feel stuck. To put it simply, this is the problem with overthinking. It makes us stuck in a loop that begins and ends in our own minds, preventing us from clearly leaving. Wisdom-loving Seneca said, ask your friend about everything, but especially about things that affect you. His advice may be useful where your own love of yourself might cloud your judgment. These simple words contain a deep truth that can help you get through the rough waters of overthinking. Stoicism teaches us that the circle of ruminating can be broken by looking for answers elsewhere. A friend's new point of view, the unbiased advice of a guide, or the timeless knowledge in a book could all be motivators. Nowadays, this means finding people whose views you value and trust. Someone from your network or a professional with the right knowledge could help you. Speaking out loud about your feelings can help in two ways. It makes things clearer as you say what's on your mind, and it lets them give you feedback that you might have missed while you were thinking too much. Beyond providing useful answers, this method serves as a reminder of how important it is to connect with others. Sharing our troubles often makes them less heavy. As social people, this is not a sign of weakness. It's a recognition of our strength as a group. Let the advice of others lead you out of the dark places of overthinking. Each talk will make the puzzle easier to solve, not because the problems are simpler, but because you're not trying to figure them out by yourself. Want to know what makes you happy? Is it your family or people you care about? Is it the money 
or just the peace of mind. The old Stoics, such as Marcus Aelius Seneca and Epictetus, had a different idea of what happiness really meant. They didn't see happiness the way most people do or the way the media shows it today. The question now is how you can be as happy as the Stoics were. Today, we're going to talk about 10 tried and true Stoic ideas that can help you be happy in 2024. There are so many useful and strong ideas in this list that following just two of them would completely alter your life. Hold on tight and pay close attention because this is going to change your life. Let's start our trip. 1. Quit questioning yourself and start having faith. Doubt is a strong enemy that often creeps into our minds like an unwanted guest. But there's a catch. It's not about getting rid of all doubt. It's about dealing with it in a stoic way. You see, even the stoics had doubts about themselves, but they knew how to use them to their advantage. Take Marcus Aelius as an example. He was the leader of an empire, but still found time to think about things and give himself advice. His strategy wasn't to ignore uncertainty. Instead, he pushed it. He asked, is this thought helpful? Does it make my life better or worse? This is a sign for us. When doubt comes up, we can face it with these questions and turn it from a problem into a chance to learn and grow. It's kind of funny how our questions get bigger when the answers are easier than we think. Alias thought, our life is what our thoughts make it. These are not just pretty words, they're a useful motto. Imagine that you are about to begin a new task or hobby. Doubt says, you can't. Here's how you turn the story around. Admit the doubt and then counter it with proof of your past wins, no matter how small they may seem. Having faith in yourself can be the first thing that makes you happy. Remember that being happy doesn't mean not having any doubts. It means being able to believe in yourself even when you do. 2. Think about your life. Have you ever stopped TV or movies to think, is this it? Let's be honest, you don't have to go up a peak and relax to think about your life. You should take a moment to think deeply about yourself, maybe while you enjoy your morning coffee. What makes me get out of bed every morning is one question you can ask yourself, or why do I do what I do? Now picture your life as a movie. What do you think? Would you watch it or fall asleep before the end credits? When you reflect, you're not being mean to yourself, you're just being honest. If your daily life were a YouTube movie, would you click like or scroll past? Don't forget that you're in charge of this show you decide if it's good enough to binge. Let's talk about dreams now. You know the ones where you show up to work in your pajamas, the ones where you really say, I want this so badly. Do they just sit on a shelf and gather dust? Now is the time to bring them back to life by breaking them down into steps as easy as your morning to-do list. Just think about it. You can take small steps toward your goals if you remember to charge your phone every night. You get to write your own life story, so make it one you'd love to share. Third, pay attention to what you can change. Life's uncertainty can be stressful at times, but there is a way to stay calm. Think about the things you can control. You can't change how the levels are set up or how other players act, just like in a video game, but you can get good at your moves. In the same way, pay attention to your deeds thoughts and emotions in real life. You should be smart about how you use this key and buttons. As a well-known Stoic educator, Seneca was once sent away. However, Seneca did not see banishment as giving up power. He went inside and worked on his writing and thinking, taking care of his mental yard. He wasn't going on a vacation, he was just focusing on what he could control. His works from this time show how important it is to focus your attention on the things that matter most. This lesson is just as important now as it was in ancient Rome. We can change some things, but not others. The main idea of Stoicism is summed up in this quote, which is often credited to Epictetus. Epictetus knew what he could and could not control, 
so he focused on his own thoughts, feelings, and actions. We can become happy, more content, and stronger by following this philosophy, just like he was when things were going badly in his life. Don't forget that the goal is not to stop the storm, but to learn how to dance in the rain. 4. Be nice to other people. You get what you give is a well-known saying. Picture throwing a rock into a lake. It sends waves far and wide, going to places the rock could never reach. That's the power of helping other people. There are big effects of small acts of kindness, like keeping the door open for someone or giving them a smile. The little acts of kindness that add up over time are what matter. By making someone else's day a little better, we make our own a little better too. But there's a catch. The good things you do often come back to you, but not always in the way you expect. The act of kindness will come back to you in many forms, sometimes as a grateful smile and other times as a helping hand when you least expect it. It's not about keeping score. It's about realizing that what we do makes the world better and more sympathetic, which is a good place for happiness to grow. Seneca knew the power of kindness and giving. He once said, wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. Seneca didn't just teach. He lived by these words and often gave advice and helped others without expecting anything in exchange. He showed us that real happiness doesn't come from getting things, but from giving things away. Let's go into 2024 with kindness in our minds. An act of kindness can lead to a better life after all. 5. Do less and do it better. Did you ever try juggling? If you start with too many balls, they will all fall to the ground. In life too, trying to do too much often means not getting much done. You need to do less, but better, of what you already do. It's not how many chores you do, but how engaged you are in them. Give everything you have to the things that really matter to you. This focused method not only makes you better at what you do, but it also makes you feel more satisfied and successful. It's not about having less that makes life easier. It's about having more of what matters. Cut your list of things to do down to the most important ones, like an artist carving away extras to show a beautiful figure. Get rid of the things that don't matter in your life to find your true goals. Being clear makes you want to act, and acting makes you happy. Focusing on fewer things will help you use your energy better, so every effort will be worth it. The great Roman leader Marcus Aelius once said, Concentrate every minute like a Roman on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness, tenderly, willingly, and with justice. He was not only in charge of an empire, but also of his time and his mind. He set priorities, thought things through, and then acted with purpose. Let's remember his wise words as we try to find happiness. We can find a world of greatness and happiness if we focus on doing less but better. To make a bigger difference, let's narrow our focus. Sixth, be thankful. Let's think about being thankful for a moment. It's kind of like finding five dollars in an old jacket. It was always there, but finding it makes your day a little better. That's how being thankful changes things. Taking pleasure in little things like a warm coffee, a text from a friend, and the sunset. Life gets fuller all of a sudden when you start to notice and be grateful for the little things. It's not about waiting for big things to happen, it's about enjoying the little things in life. How can you make being thankful a habit? It's really very easy. Keep a log of things you're thankful for. Write down one thing you're thankful for every night. What it is could be as small as taking a moment to enjoy silence or as big as reaching a personal goal. This habit changes your attention from what's missing to what's already there. And believe me, you'll find more things to be thankful for the more you look for them. Someone once said, he is a wise man who does not grieve for the things he does not have, but rejoices for those which he has. 
this person made his simple, limited life rich by focusing on what he had instead of what he didn't have. In 2024, he told us to be thankful for all the good things in our lives and to respect them. We open the doors to joy and happiness. It is important to remember that being thankful makes you happy, not being happy makes you thankful. 7. Stop looking for praise from other people. Ah, the need for acceptance from other people. In the end, we can't catch the shadow we're after. Stoicism, an old philosophy that is surprisingly applicable to modern life, has a significant lesson to teach us here. Let's start by being honest. At some point, everyone wants a thumbs up from other people. But there's a catch. Stoicism tells us to change the story. For approval, you need to look inside yourself, not outside. Think of your sense of self-worth as a stronghold. Why give the keys to someone else? Now let's get to the useful stuff. How can you actually stop this plan to get approval? First, give yourself credit for what you've done, no matter how small. This morning, did you make your bed? Good job. Take a moment to enjoy these little wins. They add up. Believe me, it's like making your mind stronger, but you're the coach and the fan. And if you want to get likes or praise on social media, stop. Do you want to do this for yourself or for the gram? Guys, here's a secret. The only thing that really matters is your opinion. Try to do something every day that makes you proud, not for the praise, but because it makes you feel good. Rewiring our brains to look for approval from within instead of from outside sources is what it's all about. It's like clearing out your mind Focus less on what other people think and make more room for your own growth. Being true to yourself is more important than not caring about other people. This change in how you think is not only freeing, it's also powerful. Eighth, give yourself a challenge. Picture yourself climbing a rock. It's hard and steep, and you might wonder why you started in the first place. Here's the thing though, every step up that peak makes you stronger. The Stoic philosophy, which is as old as the hills and as new as tomorrow's sunrise, teaches that the best way to live is to face and overcome obstacles. Now that it's 2024, let's make our daily grind our own Everest. You might be thinking, that sounds like a lot of work, right? To be Stoic, you don't have to change everything all at once. You have to make small, steady changes. To begin, make a plan that is both challenging and attainable. It might be getting in better shape, learning a new skill, or even just reading one book a month. How you grow when you work toward your goal is more important than the goal itself. Every little win helps you climb the mountain. Remember that climbing a mountain isn't something you do by yourself. Tell other people about your problems and your successes. Stoicism shows us how important it is to share and help each other. Sharing your journey will not only help you, but it will also motivate other people to start their own climbs. As we move into 2024, let's push ourselves, help each other, and enjoy the view from the tops of our own mountains. Have fun climbing. 9. Have more fun. It's not just a happy idea to laugh more, it's a key part of living a happy life. To show how wise the old Stoics were, let us look at Chrysippus, a Stoic philosopher who is said to have died of laughter. Even though that's a very extreme case, it shows a very important truth. Laughing is a serious business. It's something that helps us carry our problems and see them in a new way. Think for a moment about how silly life's little tragedies would seem if you looked at them through the lens of humor. When your coffee spills, you don't get mad. Instead, you laugh at the universe's strange timing. That's stoicism at work, telling us that we don't have to frown over everything. What can be done to make more laughing a part of everyday life? It's not as hard as you think, Start by looking for the funny side of things that happen every day. Stop and go. This is your chance to listen to your favorite funny show. Having a rough day at work? 
Trade stories with your friends to see who can come up with the stranger ones. Not ignoring the complicated parts of life is not the point. The point is to choose a happy outlook. It's a sensible, stoic way of thinking. Take charge of what you can, your thoughts and actions, and let go of what you can't. We all share a tune when we laugh, and it makes our trip together a little brighter. So, the next time you find something funny, please share it. Be that person who makes other people smile. Your joy spreads and changes people's lives in ways you may never know. To find balance within and share it to others is what Stoicism is all about. It's not enough to just tough it out. You have to enjoy life too. Feel free to laugh some more. Plus, it's wise advice that has been passed down through the years. 10. Be happy with your fate. Be happy with your fate. It sounds like a lot to ask, doesn't it? In spite of this, this is where the old knowledge of Stoicism meets our fast-paced, tech-savvy world. Stoicism isn't about hiding your feelings or facing pain with a stiff upper lip. It's about being positive no matter what life throws at you. It's like surfing. Waves of all sizes will come, but what matters is how well you can ride them. So, how do you love your fate when it can be anything from missing your Uber to having a very important email disappear into thin air? Start by changing the way you think. If something goes wrong, look at it as a chance to get better. Do you miss that Uber? You can go for a quick walk and enjoy the fresh air. Email is gone. It's time to get better at technology. It's not about being overly positive, but about seeing the good in every bad thing. You can't just make the best of a bad situation with this approach. You have to turn problems into stepping stones. Marcus Aelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, said that what gets in the way becomes the way. This means that the things that are stopping you can actually help you reach your goals. If your Wi-Fi goes down during a crucial call, don't get angry. Instead, enjoy the world without your devices. You could talk to someone nearby or write down those creative ideas you've been putting off. To put it simply, loving your fate means accepting that life is unpredictable with grace and speed. It means dancing in the rain instead of waiting for the storm to end. Remember that life is happening for you, not just to you as we move into 2024. Every bump, turn and tumble is a chance to get smarter stronger and happier. Smile as you ride those waves and watch how your world changes. Based on stoic ideas, we will start to understand and solve hard and complicated problems. You will learn from me how to fortify your inner fortitude and resilience in the face of adversity. We will learn from Marcus Aurelius who faced storms in both his political and personal life, how to live a good life with meaning in a world that is always changing. Marcus Aurelius's meditations are like a mirror that show his deep knowledge and insights, inspiring us to develop inner courage and self-mastery. He thought that if we focus on the things we can change, like our thoughts, feelings and deeds, we can get through anything, stay balanced, and find inner peace. Lesson 1. Learn to be grateful. Learning how to be happy can help you in many ways. More happiness, better mental health and stronger relationships are all things that people who regularly show thanks report. In fact, they are healthier than we are. Most of the time people who are grateful are happier, less stressed out and better able to handle tough conditions. You could start a gratitude book to bring more thankfulness into your daily life. Whatever the thing is, write down three things you are thankful for every day. By switching your attention from the bad things in life to the good, this simple habit can help you see and value the things you're grateful for. Giving thanks to others is another way to practice gratitude. Thank your loved ones, friends and co-workers for their kindness, understanding and support. You can improve your relationships with others and grow your sense of thanks by letting them know how much you value what they bring to your life. 
Also, make it a habit to think about your accomplishments, wins, and the problems you've solved. Keeping track of your personal growth and the lessons you've learned can help you look back on your journey and feel more thankful for the things that have shaped you. Developing gratitude can also be helped by being mindful. When you focus on the present, you can enjoy small things that you might have missed before, like the warm sun on your face or the laughs of people you care about. You can be more thankful for the simple things in life if you enjoy these times. Practicing thanks is a strong way to improve mental health, keep a good attitude, and build resilience. You can feel deeply thankful for all the good things in your life by writing in a gratitude book, telling others how much you appreciate them, thinking about how you've grown as a person, and practicing mindfulness. As soon as you step outside on a lovely morning, the warm sun hits your face. You don't just keep going, you stop and enjoy the moment. You are thankful that you could feel the sun's warmth and light that day, which is something that people often forget about in their busy lives. This is how you can use thankfulness and awareness to make your daily life better. Lesson 2. Be okay with things you can't replace. Take every step and every moment to appreciate what fate has given you, and let's show love to the people whose paths have brought us together with open hearts, not just words. When you love, your heart is always full. Accepting and letting go of things we can't change is one of the most important lessons Marcus Aurelius teaches us. Building resilience and inner strength depends on this basic Stoic philosophy concept. We can focus our energy on what matters most, our thoughts, feelings and actions. When we learn to accept that life is unsure and that we can't change certain things, Acceptance helps us be at peace with the present and be happy even though life has its ups and downs. Let go of the need to be in charge and we'll be free of worry, fear and sadness. This will make it easier to handle tough situations with courage and knowledge. Start using this way of thinking by listing the things in your life that you can't change. As you practice taking things as they are, make a list of things you can't change. This practice can help you figure out what you can and cannot change so you can stop trying to change things that are out of your power that aren't going to help. Detachment practice is another helpful method. Detachment means realizing and valuing the fact that life is temporary. We can have a more realistic view of life and learn to accept the natural changes that happen in it if we realize that everything is temporary and can change. When things are hard, tell yourself that they will get better and go into the situation with an open heart and mind. You can also use meditation to help you learn to accept things as they are. Setting aside time every day to clear your mind and pay attention to your feelings and thoughts can help you become more aware of how you handle life's difficulties. This increased self-awareness can help you figure out when you're having a hard time accepting things that can't be changed and make you more open to new possibilities. Building resilience and inner strength requires us to learn to accept the things we can't change. Mindfulness, calm and meditation can help us see life in a more balanced and open way. This way of thinking not only helps us deal with problems with courage and smarts, but it also helps us enjoy the beauty and wealth of life. As Marcus Aurelius said so well, accept the things that fate binds you and love the people that fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. Let's say you have a great plan to go for a walk in the park and do fun things outside. When you get to the park though, you see that the weather is bad and it's raining. You choose to accept the change and find ways to enjoy the day instead of getting mad and sad about it. You and your friends decide to change your plans and go to a nearby museum instead. Overall, the tour is fun, and I learned a lot. By being open to changing your plans when the weather changed, you had a great day and made memories that will last a lifetime. Lesson 3. Learn to control your point of view. The wise words of Marcus Aurelius 
are a strong warning that we need to be careful about what we think and how we understand things. We gain the ability to control our emotional responses and thought patterns, encouraging greater resilience and inner strength by recognizing that our readings of events are not factual, but rather personal views. Being self-aware is the first step to taking charge of our ideas and views. It is very important to keep an eye on our thoughts and figure out when we're stuck in negative or useless thought loops. When we are aware of these trends, we can work to replace them with more positive and logical points of view. Doing daily awareness activities is a good way to improve this skill. Being mindful means focusing on the present moment without judging it. This lets us notice our thoughts and feelings as they come up without getting attached or reacting too strongly. Being mindful helps us become more self-aware and learn to recognize when our views need to be changed. You can also change your point of view by testing your thinking through cognitive retraining. This means being aware of any negative or illogical thoughts you have and then actively questioning them and changing them with thoughts that are more balanced and make sense. If the thought, I'm a failure because I didn't get that promotion comes up, try to reframe it as, maybe I didn't get the promotion this time, but my worth and abilities are not determined by this outcome. I can learn from this experience and move forward in my career. Finally, surrounding yourself with positive influences can help you handle how others see you. Look for friends, teachers or role models who have the beliefs and traits you want to develop. Positive talks and activities can help you keep a positive and helpful attitude. To sum up, controlling our viewpoint is one of the most important things we can do to build resilience and inner strength. We can change our minds to have a more balanced and positive view by practicing self-awareness, mindfulness, cognitive reworking, and being around positive influences. This change gives us the strength to overcome adversity and face life's challenges with more assurance and peace. Marcus Aurelius said it best, remember that our perceptions are malleable and we have the power to shape them in a way that serves us. Imagine that you went to an interview for a job, but didn't get the job. If you didn't get the promotion after the interview, you might feel bad about yourself and think, I failed because I didn't get this promotion. Cognitive retraining, on the other hand, can help you change your point of view. The fact that I didn't get the promotion this time doesn't make me a failure or unworthy. I can use this experience to learn and improve my skills. This job wasn't meant for me, and there may be better opportunities ahead. This failure doesn't define my worth. It's just a step in my career journey. By cognitive reframing, you've changed a negative thought into a more positive and balanced one, which has helped you stay positive. Fourth lesson, get better at being detached. Don't let what other people think or do affect your precious soul fire. Marcus Aurelius stressed in his writings how important it was to separate oneself from outside events and situations. His advice is that we should focus on developing our spirituality and inner ideals. This will not only bring us peace, but it will also make us stronger when life gets tough. We can develop more inner virtue and inner strength rather than looking for approval or happiness from outside sources. Detachment has a huge range of perks. Detachment helps us stay calm and stable in our minds, even when things are hard or trying. It also keeps us from getting too attached to results, things, or other people's views. In the end, this can cause stress, worry, and regret. To use detachment in your daily life, start by paying more attention to how you think and feel about things that happen around you. Watch how you react to things and work on watching your feelings and thoughts without getting too attached to them. Being more self-aware can help you tell when you're focusing too much on things going on around you and help you shift your attention inward. Something else that can help you practice separation is to keep in mind that everything changes. Recognize that things, people and situations can change 
and that trying to find permanent happiness in these areas is pointless in the end. Focus on personal growth, morals and faith instead to find true happiness and satisfaction inside. You can also learn to be detached by getting to know yourself well and knowing your core ideals. Once you know what's most important to you, it's easier to let go of outside factors that might not match your ideals. You should think about your core values and use them to help you make choices and act. Last, do spiritual or reflective activities on a frequent basis. Meditation, writing in a book or prayer are all good ways to help with this. You can deepen your link to your inner self, separate yourself from outside forces and have the courage to put your attention toward your own spiritual and personal growth by engaging in these activities. The relaxing and focused benefits of meditation help you go deep inside which leads to self-awareness and peace. Journaling, on the other hand, lets you express yourself and think about things, which helps you learn more about your feelings and thoughts. Also, whether it's a religious practice or something you do on your own, prayer can give you comfort and direction, connect you to bigger goals and strengthen your inner resilience. These techniques can help you find peace of mind and learn more about yourself when you make them a part of your daily life. They show how to find your way through the confusing outside world with a strong and brave spirit. Separating yourself from outside events and situations can help you grow as a person and spiritually. It can also help you find inner peace and strength. Having a spiritual practice, knowing your values, taking a broader view of life, and accepting that things change over time can help you create a sense of distance that will help you handle life's difficulties with grace and ease. Fiveth lesson, use your head. Life happiness is not just an idea, it's also a result of the ideas we think. With great wisdom, Marcus Aurelius said that the way we think determines our happiness and peace. Thinking logically and logically is not only the key to long-lasting happiness, but it's also the key to getting through life's challenges and problems. By letting reason guide our thoughts and actions, we can make smarter choices, better handle our feelings, and face problems with clarity and a lot of flexibility. Thinking logically helps us get through tough situations by letting us look at them clearly, come up with possible answers, and compare the pros and cons of each option. Dealing with problems by using logic lessens the effect of strong feelings like fear or anger, which often cloud our judgment and cause us to make bad choices. Using critical thinking skills is one way to improve the way you think logically. This means examining data, asking beliefs, and looking at things from different points of view. In a tough situation, take a step back and think about what you're assuming whether there's enough evidence to back up your views and whether there are any answers or other options you may have missed. Regularly reflecting on yourself is another way to improve your logical thinking. By looking at your actions, views and thoughts on a regular basis, you can learn more about your biases, thinking habits and what drives you. Being self-aware can help you see when your feelings or wrong ideas are affecting your thinking. This can help you direct your thoughts in a more basic and logical way. Controlling your feelings is important because strong emotions can make it hard to think clearly. Meditation and deep breathing exercises can help you better handle your feelings, giving your mind the space it needs to think clearly and logically. Finally, you might want to look for chances to learn and improve your problem-solving skills. Do things or take classes that make you think critically and artistically. You can better handle life's hurdles and follow your goals with self-assurance and resilience if you work on improving your thinking skills. In conclusion, Marcus Aurelius's lessons tell us that peace and happiness are not impossible to achieve if we learn to think logically and act in a planned way. Using reason as a guide, 
we can get through life's challenges with purpose and understanding, solving problems and finding happiness. Through guided thinking, we can change our thoughts to create a life full of joy, meaning and resilience, as Marcus Aurelius wisely said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Puzzles, strategy games and discussions are all mentally difficult things to do. You might also want to try new intellectual hobbies, read things that will make you think, or have interesting conversations with friends who share your interests. These actions will not only make you more aware, but they will also help you grow as a person and gain a better knowledge of the world around you. Don't miss the chance to keep growing your mind and seeing things from different angles by doing these interesting things. It's possible that these events will help you think more logically and face problems with more clarity and reason. Building resilience is an important part of getting through hard times. By practicing self-reflection, critical thinking and problem solving, we can improve our logical thinking which will help us deal with life's problems more easily and effectively. Lesson 6. Be humble and show understanding. Ask yourself, what is the most recent mistake of mine that is similar to the one I'm about to criticize? Before you criticize someone, the qualities of humility and kindness are important for building inner power and resilience. They help us get closer to others, think more compassionately, and learn more about ourselves. This quote from Marcus Aurelius tells us that we should think about our own flaws and try to understand how others feel and what they've been through before we judge or criticize them. Being humble means admitting that we are flawed and that everyone, no matter their past or situation, can teach us something. Being humble makes us more open to feedback and personal growth which helps us deal with problems and adjust to new situations better. Try to speak less and listen more in everyday life. Pay attention to what other people say and think and be willing to admit when you're wrong or when you can learn something from them. You should also be ready to own up to your mistakes and accept blame for what you did. Being ready to be weak can help you grow and get better. Having empathy, on the other hand, means trying to understand how someone else feels, what they think, and what they've been through. You can cope with challenging situations and improve relationships thanks to this ability, which also makes you more strong in the face of adversity. It also helps you connect with others more deeply. When you talk to someone, give them your full attention and try to understand their point of view without judging them. This will help you build empathy to encourage greater sharing and show real care for their feelings and experiences, ask open-ended questions. Giving your time or money to good causes can also help you learn to understand how others feel. As you help others, especially those who are having a hard time, you can better understand their feelings and experiences, which can make you feel very compassionate and empathetic. Empathy and humility are two important parts of building inner power and resilience. We can become more sensitive and humble by practicing active listening, thinking about ourselves and doing things that make us more compassionate. Lesson 7. Take care of your own peace of mind. Marcus Aurelius stresses how important our thoughts are to our mental health and peace of mind. Finding and keeping inner peace is important for staying mentally balanced and building resilience. It also helps us deal with problems more effectively and stay calm when things go wrong. Peace of mind is important in many ways. The first thing it does is help us deal with worry and nervousness better. When we find comfort in ourselves, we're better able to deal with the stresses and unknowns of life. This balance in your mind can act as a shield lowering your chance of mental problems and improving your general mental health. Second, inner peace gives us the power to think and make smart choices, so we don't let our feelings get in the way of our decisions. We can face problems with more clarity and focus, which leads to better plans and answers. One good way to keep your inner peace is to do things that make you happy and calm down. Connecting with nature, 
doing things you enjoy, or spending time with people you care about are all examples of this. Self-care should be a top priority, and you should do things that are good for your soul and give you a feeling of balance and peace. Similarly, it is important to learn good ways to deal with worry and bad feelings. Some examples of this are doing deep breathing techniques or doing physical activities like walks or yoga. These methods can help relieve stress and get your mind back in balance. Finally, think about making thanks a regular habit. We've already talked about how focusing on the good things in life and being thankful for the gifts you've been given can help you feel more at peace with yourself. Think about getting stuck in traffic on your way to work in the morning. If you feel worried and angry, tell yourself that you can't change the traffic, but you can change how you react to it. You decide to see this as a chance to think about things and be more aware. Focusing on yourself, you take deep breaths and listen to educational podcasts or practice being thankful for having a job to travel to. If you change your point of view and focus on what you can control, you can turn a situation that could be upsetting into a time of inner peace and progress. Lesson 8. Turn problems into chances to do things. Marcus Aurelius had a deep understanding that taught us that problems we face are not just things that get in the way, but things that push us to act and grow. His wise words show that problems are actually chances to grow and get better, not just hurdles. We can build resilience and mental strength by changing how we think about problems and problems that stand in our way. This will help us get through even the most difficult conditions. We can grow as people in many ways when we experience challenges. In these situations, we can learn new skills, gain useful experiences, and learn more about ourselves and our potential. Also, getting through tough times can boost our confidence because we realize we can face challenges and come out better on the other side. A growth attitude is the first thing you need to do to turn problems into opportunities to learn and grow. People with a growth mindset believe that we can improve our skills and knowledge by working hard and being dedicated all the time. If you are faced with a problem, think about what skills or information you can learn from it and how this can help you become a better and more knowledgeable person. Another way to see problems as opportunities for growth is to learn how to change the way you think negatively. When you are in a tough situation, try to figure out what negative thoughts it brings up and actively change them into positive, powerful and encouraging ones. If you're thinking, I don't have enough skills to do this job, try changing your thought to, that's right, this is a challenging task, but it's also a chance for me to learn and grow. This shift in perspective can help you approach challenges with a growth mindset, seeing them as chances to improve yourself and move forward. This is one way to change negative thoughts into positive ones. It will help you become more patient and confident in yourself, which will eventually make you feel better about life. Also, getting ideas from the stories of people who have been through tough times and come out on top can be very helpful. You can learn about people who have overcome obstacles and used them as stepping stones to success by reading books or listening to podcasts about great people. The fact that these people are role models shows that growth and change are possible despite any obstacles. Lastly, when you're having a hard time, you might want to get help from friends or a counselor. Surround yourself with people who can encourage, advise, and give you new viewpoints that will help you see difficulties as chances to grow instead of impossible problems. An important part of building resilience and inner power is turning problems into opportunities to learn and grow. By having a growth attitude, you can improve the way you restructure your thoughts and get ideas from creative sources while using your support network. You'll be ready to use obstacles as chances to learn, grow, and become more spiritually wise and better at yourself. 9. Enjoy the present moment. 
Stop thinking about the past and the future. Marcus Aurelius's deep advice stressed how important it was to live in the present moment. He reminds us that strength and happiness come from accepting and loving every moment of life as it is, and he advises us to let go of regrets about the past and fears about the future. By focusing on what's going on around us, we can enjoy the fullness of life and develop a deep sense of peace and happiness. Focusing on the present has many benefits, such as lowering worry and anxiety, becoming more self-aware and improving mental health. Mindfulness and living in the present moment fully free us from holding on to old memories or fears about the future. This lets us fully experience our feelings and circumstances. Being more aware of our surroundings and ourselves lets us explore the depths of our souls, which leads to personal growth and discovery. Mindfulness meditation is a good way to find yourself in the present moment. During this type of meditation, you just notice your feelings and thoughts without judging them. Being in the present moment is made possible by it. Find a quiet place, sit in a comfortable position, and focus on your breath to start this meditation. When feelings and thoughts come up, just be aware of them without judging them and gently bring your attention back to your breath. This habit can have a huge effect on your health and can be done in as little as five minutes a day. Making mindfulness practices a part of your daily life is another way to stay in the moment. This could mean mindful eating, which means enjoying every bite of food by savoring the taste and texture, or walking meditation, which means focusing on the sounds and sights around you and the way your body feels as you move. By practicing mindfulness while doing normal things, you can grow to value the present moment more and connect deeply with your feelings and thoughts. You could set aside some time every day to think about and evaluate yourself. Keeping a book can help you process your feelings, thoughts and experiences, which can make you more aware of the present moment. Writing in a notebook also helps you see similarities in your life. You might find that certain people, events or situations keep coming up in your journal. This will help you learn more about your goals, flaws and skills. So, start writing in a diary and set aside time every day to look at yourself and judge yourself. This could change your life for the better and help you learn and be more aware of the world around you. Practice 10. Keep going. To keep from getting lost in thoughts of what you don't have, be aware of and grateful for the good things in your life. Always be thankful and remember that the things you have now can become strong wishes one day if they are taken away. Marcus Aurelius stresses in this last lesson how important it is to stay determined and keep making progress when facing problems. By focusing on the good things we already have and keeping an open mind about growth, we can keep moving forward and improving even when things get tough. Being determined is a key part of getting through tough times because it gives us the tools to get past problems. Failure teaches us lessons and steady growth moves us closer to our goals. By always moving forward, we build inner strength and resilience and get better at the skills and information we need to deal with future obstacles. Set clear, attainable goals that are in line with your ideals and hobbies to stay motivated and focused on growth. Even in the face of loss or adversity, having a clear picture of your goals can help you stay focused and motivated. Break your goals down into steps that you can handle and remember to celebrate your progress at each one to keep yourself going. Practice self-compassion is another way to keep yourself motivated. Recognize that loss and problems are a part of life and when you face adversity, be kind and understanding of yourself. Self-compassion helps you keep a positive outlook and the drive to keep going even when things get tough. Also, being in a group of helpful people who share your values can help you stay motivated and have a growth-oriented attitude. Find friends, teachers or support groups whose morals and goals are similar to yours. 
you can gain motivation and courage from their successes. Lastly, set aside time to regularly think about your growth and what you've done well. Respect the difficulties you've gotten through, the skills you've learned, and the emotional growth you've gone through on your way. This kind of self-reflection can keep you motivated to face obstacles and reach your goals throughout the day. To get through tough times and build resilience, you need to stay determined and keep making progress. Setting clear goals, being kind to yourself, having support around you, and thinking about your journey can help you stay motivated and keep going even when life throws you problems. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius has taught us 10 lessons about life that can help us become more patient and strong. We have gained a lot of useful knowledge from these lessons, which has helped us understand our points of view and accept what can't be changed. Pay attention to the moment, work on being humble and empathetic, be thankful and see problems as opportunities to grow. Follow logic, work on inner peace, which stands for separation, and keep moving forward without stopping. By applying these ancient lessons to our everyday lives, we can help ourselves grow, get through tough times, and live lives with more meaning and purpose. Remember that getting more patient and mentally strong takes a lifetime of work, practice, and commitment. When you are going through tough times in life, remember the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius and try to follow the steps he so eloquently laid out in meditations. By doing this, you will not only become more patient and flexible in the face of adversity, but you will also find inner peace with a sense of fulfillment and purpose. Take some time to think about the important lessons that life has taught you as we come to the end of this trip. In your journey to grow and learn about yourself, I hope you can find a way to use these skills. Use Marcus Aurelius's wise words to help you stay cool, clear and steady through all of life's ups and downs. By using these lessons in your daily life, you will be able to master your thoughts, become more patient and build mental strength. This will help you do well in a world that is always changing. I hope that the words of Marcus Aurelius will give you strength, motivation and change. Finding patience and mental strength is not only a way to learn more about yourself, but it can also bring you long-lasting happiness and satisfaction. Marcus Aurelius really stood out. Many people think of him as the last of the five good emperors who really cared about their people. Besides that, he stayed a dedicated student of Stoic philosophy. While Aurelius was emperor, he found time to write a collection of personal works that are now known as the Meditations. Through these writings, the Roman emperor shared many important ideas about how to live a happy life. This is why we are sharing with you today 10 of Marcus Aurelius's most important insights on how to be happy. One last thing before we start. I really want you to stay interested until the end. If you're here, it means you want to become a better person, but you need to watch the first ones first to understand the last five because they lay the groundwork for understanding the last five. I look forward to seeing you there. Number one, work on building your own style. Marcus Aurelius said, the mind itself has no needs except those it makes up. The society we live in is very focused on material things and ads for the newest gadgets are constantly bothering us. We are constantly exposed to the rich and famous through the media. We are not likely to find real happiness when we try to find it in material things. Another want will always be there, like a bigger house, a faster car, or more money in the bank. Also, when we look for happiness in material things, we give up control over our own happiness. Basically, the lesson is that nothing we own is really ours. Things can be taken away. Suppose we describe ourselves by how many rooms we have in our homes. What happens when we lose our home? The main idea here is that we shouldn't try to get rich, but instead should work on building our character. 
Our goals should be to become kind, honest and hard-working people. The most important things are to improve yourself and know how to treat others with respect. Our house could catch fire, our car could be stolen and our business could go out of business at some point. Our spirit is the one thing that can never be taken away from us. Character is the only thing that defines us and guides us through life. Character flaws or strengths can keep someone in good standing or bad, and this is often what leaves a permanent impression. Number two, stop looking for praise from other people. Marcus Aurelius says, no matter how good a life has been, there will still be people around the bed who welcome the sad event. There are eight billion people in the world and trying to live a life that pleases all of them is completely crazy. It can feel like our happiness depends on other people these days, whether we're trying to get hundreds of likes on Instagram or a date on Tinder. Still, there are ways to stop trying to please other people. The important thing is to start by addressing your own train of thought. Instead of looking for approval from other people, Try to find real happiness by building a stronger relationship with yourself. Understand that if someone doesn't like you, it's not because you're not smart, funny or kind. No matter what you do or say, there will always be people who don't like you. So, it's smarter to live your life in the most honest way possible. If you don't agree with someone's political view, don't act like you do. Also, if one of your friends says something hurtful, let them know. The French author André Gide said, it's better to be hated for who you are than loved for who you are not. Number three, only think about the things you can control and ignore the rest. Marcus Aurelius asks, is the cucumber sour? Get rid of it. Are there thorns in the way? Get around them. That is all you need to know, not anything else. We are only in charge of two things in life, what we think and what we do, only those. The rest is out of our reach. On the other hand, how often do we waste time and energy worrying about things we can't change? Anger and other strong emotions aren't always useless. Sometimes they push us to do something about wrongs. Despite this, there are many times when these feelings are pointless. Take traffic as an example. You can swear, yell and honk as much as you want, or you can turn on the radio and relax. The traffic will not let you go and there is nothing you can do about it. No matter what, you can't tell other people what to say, do or think. So pay less attention to other people and only think about your own life. Take your anger and use it to do something useful. It's too late when you lose control and react. You've already set off events that will make you feel regret and sadness later on. But when we're not angry, is the best time to think about our anger and rage. By being aware of and understanding what anger can do to you, you train your mind and emotions to act in a more gentle way when anger hits. Feel angry, but don't blow up. Instead, Use your anger's energy and power to make something useful and artistic for yourself and others. Put your anger into things that will help others and inspire you. Fifth, having bad thoughts leads to having bad feelings. Your power to control your thoughts, treat it with respect, says Marcus Aurelius. It's everything that keeps your mind safe from false impressions, wrong about your nature, and the nature of all rational beings. The bad feelings we often have are often caused by how we see things. Take the case of Ethan and Nathan, two friends who are asked to the birthday party of a friend they both know. Ethan is very friendly and excited to go to this party because he thinks it will be a great chance to meet lots of new people. Nathan, on the other hand, is upset and scared because he doesn't know anyone there and thinks he won't be able to find anyone to talk to. This is a great example of how two different people can respond very differently to the same event. We need to understand that the things that make us anxious, worried or angry aren't related to our surroundings. These feelings come from the way we think. Because of this, we have the power to give ourselves back 
and get control of our feelings. Be ready for anything that might happen. 6. Be ready for anything that might happen and act with resilience. Marcus Aurelius says, The art of living is more like wrestling than dancing, insofar as it stands ready against the accidental and the unforeseen and is not prone to falling. Resilience in the face of adversity and failures is the key to happiness. It's interesting how people who do well in life deal with adversity differently and, most importantly, are ready for whatever comes. Life for them is about making changes when things go wrong and finding the good in bad situations. No matter how scared or unwilling you are, you can take small steps and move forward when you don't let failure stop you. Look at life through the good lens of perspective and remember that time is always moving forward. The wise Marcus Aurelius says, the current of time is strong and this too shall pass. Seventh, be incredibly thankful for everything you have. Marcus Aurelius states, take full account of the excellencies which you possess and in gratitude remember how you would hanker for them if you had them not. We tend to forget about all the great people and things in our lives and only think about what we don't have. Marcus Aurelius is smart when he says that you should make an effort not to take for granted all the wonderful people and things that happen to you. How would things be different if they weren't in your life? How would you want them to be in your life? You can feel deeply grateful for all the good things in your life by doing this simple but very effective exercise. We focus too much on what we don't have and what's going wrong and forget to enjoy the easy things in life, like being living, having close family and friends, and being able to love and enjoy. Being grateful for what you have and counting your blessings makes you feel great and makes you happier. Eighth, being tolerant means not passing judgment. Marcus Aurelius says, People are here for each other. You can teach them or put up with them. One thing that holds us all together is a complex web of connections that we can't escape. Living alone will only lead to a life that doesn't matter. Seeing other people with empathy gives us the strength to give up or change our thoughts about them. You must be good at teaching and sharing, but that doesn't mean we have to take care of other people. It is only right that we take responsibility for ourselves. Trying to change other people's behavior to match our expectations will only make us unhappy because other people's actions and outcomes are their own. 9. The peace you're looking for is inside you. Marcus Aurelius says, Today I escaped anxiety, or no, I discarded it, because it was within me, in my own perceptions, not outside. It's easy to forget that everything we experience takes place in the space between our ears. Fear, anger, regret, happiness, sadness, peace, doubt, too much thought, stress, confidence, and everything else. Our emotions shape our experiences, and our brains decide which feelings to respond with based on these experiences. Realize that everything we go through comes from within, and you'll realize that you have a lot more control over how you feel in your daily life than you thought. Learn how to control your feelings and you'll learn how to be happy for a long time. Number 10. Accept that life is temporary. Do not act as if you had a thousand years to live, says Marcus Aurelius. Death is close by while you're still living and able to do things. Do good. If we spend each day as if it were the last, we will focus on the things that count and not waste time. Most people forget that they are going to die and act as if they are ageless, putting off their hopes and dreams for later. Marcus Aurelius' main point is that we need to value the short time we have and start living our lives right now. Most of the time, we tell ourselves that we will start working out, looking for a job, or writing that book tomorrow. The word tomorrow is one of the most dangerous in English. Don't wait for tomorrow, live for today.
Did you ever think about why some people only show up when they need something from you? They take things without thinking and never give anything back. The world isn't as great as we think it is. People often put on a mask of intelligence to get what they want. Persons who take advantage of you will always be there, no matter how nice or helpful you are. Some people are very clear about how they are using you, but others are more sneaky and make it hard to tell. We are going to talk about 10 signs that someone is only using you and doesn't care about you today. It is important to note that the purpose of this conversation is not to judge or criticize anyone. Instead, it is to learn more about human nature and how we can handle tough situations with strength and calmness. Let's learn how to spot these people's red flags, set clear limits, and build up a strong character to handle life's problems. The constant lack of respect is number one. When there is a connection, lack of respect is not just one action. It's a pattern of actions that show a cold and uncaring attitude. Respect is something that all real friends and loyal companions always do. They show care and share duty all the time. But people who take advantage of you often don't care about these simple rules. Upon closer inspection, this attitude forms a pattern of behavior that shows lack of care and greed. Even if you try hard, they will often criticize you without a good reason. They put down your work and will sometimes even make fun of or embarrass you in public. Imagine that your plans are suddenly canceled or that other people are always late. It looks like they think you should change to fit their needs and wants. The way that person acts toward you shows that they don't value you. This lack of respect is most dangerous because it has a huge effect on your self-esteem and confidence. You might begin to doubt your skills and self-worth, and you might feel unimportant and underappreciated. This could make you feel hopeless, like you don't know what to do, or even depressed. Still, it's important to remember that flaws are part of being human. When someone takes advantage of you, they do these things over and over again, and don't try to stop or are aware that they are doing it. Life is always shifting and growing, and a lot of people feel stuck in a never-ending loop of trying to please others and find love, only to be turned down and ignored over and over again. Being aware that you deserve care and respect is important. There is no other kind of care that you should accept than that. I see your life as a trip on a ship, and you are the master of that trip. To boost your confidence, you need to know how much you're really worth. Number two, not keeping promises. There are promises after promises. One of the strongest ways to commit to a relationship and keep it going, but also one of the easiest to break. People who are trying to take advantage of you will often lie to you and put someone or something else ahead of you. Picture your relationship as a play where the words are the most important part and the deeds are just forgotten lines. People who break promises are often big parts in everyday drama. They seem concerned and promise to be there for you and be your friend in any situation, whether they are co-workers, friends or even family. Though things aren't always what they seem. They might say they will help you with a job, be there for you when things get tough or just talk and share. The important thing is that they often don't follow through on their actions and statements like players who can't do well on stage. They want you to feel let down and lied to by those claims that don't seem to come true. Breaking vows is a big test because of this. It tells the difference between people who see relationships as two-way streets of mutual respect and support and people who only see them as ways to get what they want. When someone is abandoned, they often learn hard but important lessons. There are times when vows are not based on honesty and sincerity. In these kinds of cases, we need to learn how to set limits in our interactions. This helps us avoid being used and also builds our self-esteem and independence in partnerships. It's important to say no or stay away from people who only want to use us without giving anything back. 
Early detection of unhealthy relationships and avoidance not only helps us stay safe, but it also frees up time and energy for more worthwhile and important relationships. Remember that what you know about yourself and do for yourself is what makes you valuable, not what other people get from you. Third, there's always competition. Each move in the board game, chess is carefully planned to both strengthen one's own position and weaken the opponent's. Similarly, there are people in our relationships who have ulterior goals and often treat it like a game. In this kind of relationship, you probably feel like you're not worth much or respected. The other person often seems aggressive, both when it's necessary and when it's not, which makes you feel nervous and stressed. Not only do they not care about what you have to say, but they also often cut you off or make fun of what you say. There are many ways that this constant competition shows up. When you're with this person, they often put themselves above you and make fun of even the smallest accomplishments. They don't share your happiness when you achieve something. Instead, they are jealous or try to bring down your successes. In the workplace, they often use behavior like making excuses, twisting the truth, or even lies to stay in charge. Not only does this hurt your trust, but it also makes meetings stressful and dangerous. When they try to show they are smarter, better, or more successful, you can tell even in everyday talks. This kind of behavior comes from deep-seated fear and a skewed sense of one's own worth. Their sense of self-worth comes from beating other people, not from their own accomplishments. Every time they talk to you, it's like a competition. They have to win and you have to lose. That way of thinking gets in the way of shared growth so that people can look amazing and better. Not only does this relationship not give you the support and motivation you need, but it also has unhealthy competition that hurts your health and spirit. It makes things constantly stressful, so that competition takes the place of real teamwork or support. Your accomplishments are not praised. Instead, they are seen as a threat to their power and your problems are not understood. Instead, they are seen as a chance for them to get ahead. It's important to be aware of and understand this trend of behavior. We can set limits and, if necessary, change things in the relationship to make it better. Part of this process is understanding that relationships shouldn't be based on a never-ending race to be the best, but on shared respect and support. Number four, not being very interested in social relationships on a personal level. Lack of detailed personal interest is another big red flag. There is a lack of respect and personal bond, as well as a lack of interest in this. When someone doesn't care about or try to understand the little things in your life, it's likely that they see the connection as a way to get what they want instead of a two-way tie. You might notice that they forget things you've told them, like your fears, hobbies or dreams. They may also forget about days that are important to you, like your birthday or an anniversary. Along with making you feel ignored, this makes them think you're not worth anything. They also show that they aren't interested in you by how they respond to your feelings. They might make fun of or ignore your fears and sadness, even thinking that they are annoying or not important. Not only does this make you feel alone in the relationship, but it can also make you feel unsafe talking about your feelings. Friends who only care about themselves and never ask about your life, feelings or dreams are an example of someone who is not personally interested in you. You feel like they don't care about you at all in this relationship. They just want to tell you their story. This person's lack of interest in you shows that what you can do for them is more important than who you are. In this case, you should ask yourself, is this connection worth putting more time and energy into? Showing care and interest doesn't always have to be big. It can be in the little things, like listening, remembering, and caring about how the other person feels. These things might not being there could mean that you need to rethink how important this relationship is to you. Being uninterested in a relationship is a sign that we need to rethink our ties 
and look for a place where we are valued and respected. If you've read this far, you are one of the few people who really wants to grow as a person. Fifth, surface connection and what it means. As a relationship goes on, casual link is common when one person only uses you and doesn't care about you. This sign is especially risky because it hides what the relationship is really like. People who want to take advantage of you usually don't want to make a deep bond with you. Interactions that don't go deeper than the surface show this habit. You might have this kind of relationship with a friend who doesn't care about how you feel or with a co-worker who only calls you when they need help. It can happen in family or love situations too when one person only thinks about what they can get and not their feelings or wants. When this happens, we can tell that there isn't any real connection or care for the other person's feelings or well-being. People who use you usually see you as a way to get what they want, not thinking about what will happen to you or how their actions will affect you. When asked, they might show care or kindness, but this isn't always the case or true. A big problem with this kind of relationship is that it can hurt the person being used as mental health and sense of self-worth. When you don't feel cared for or praised all the time, you might start to doubt your own worth and think you can't change anything. Getting into this kind of friendship takes courage and knowledge of yourself. Realizing your own value and worth is important and so is making clear limits. You need to have the courage to ask yourself things like Am I putting my time and energy into a relationship that matters? Also, am I lowering my self-worth to keep up a shallow relationship? Keep in mind that you deserve connections that are real and honest. To protect your mind and soul, the first thing you need to do is learn how to spot a shallow relationship. Also, it's a chance for you to look for deeper, more useful relationships where you can really share and feel depth and exchange. Ducker 6. Using emotions to get what you want. Being able to gently play with your feelings is a sign that someone is using you and doesn't care about you. Most of the time, they use your feelings against you to get what they want. They make situations that make you feel confused, sorry, or ashamed, which shows that they are like this. They know what to say or do to make you feel something, which makes it easy for them to control or change your choices. There are a lot of different and complex ways to manipulate people emotionally. They might praise you too much at times to make you feel like you owe them something, which they then use to push you to do things that are beyond your abilities. They might use the isolate and conquer approach to try to break down your ties with other people so that you feel alone and more open to their control. Not only does emotional trickery make people lose trust and self-esteem, but it also makes them doubt their own ability to judge the honest character of others. You might feel stuck in a bad relationship and not know how to get out of it because you've been tricked and lied to so much that you can't see the truth. When someone is manipulating someone else's mind, the balance of power always tips in their favor. They decide when to show love and when to pull away, which throws off your goal. Emotional manipulation is not about helping or growing each other. Instead, the manipulator only cares about meeting their own wants and doesn't think about the mental health of others. To spot psychological trickery, you need to be very aware of the ways that people constantly play with your feelings. You need to look deeper into yourself to learn more about how these exchanges impact your mood. This is the seventh thing, making you feel bad. If you feel used and uncared for in a relationship where one person is more important than the other, guilt can make you act out a lot. The person using this strategy is good at tricking you by playing on your sense of duty, compassion or fairness. They might be upset or complain all the time about what you do or don't do, which can be hard on your emotions and mental health. They might say you're not good enough or that you can't live up to their standards, which can make you feel like you'll never be able to please them. This method of making people feel guilty is often sneaky and harmful. They may even pick out specific times when you need their help 
and make it seem like a bother in order to make you feel bad. They might ask, after everything I've done for you, is this how you treat me? To make you feel like you owe them something and can't say no to their requests. They might also make you feel bad about things that have nothing to do with them, like your own choices or your relationships with other people. This is one way they try to keep you from getting help or advice from family or friends. This approach works because it takes advantage of something basic about people, their need to see themselves as good, helpful and loving. By making you feel bad about these good traits, the person using this method controls you. This makes you do things not because you want to, but because you feel like you have to, which can make you angry or tired. This approach not only makes the setting you're in mentally unhealthy, but it can also hurt your mental health deeply and for a long time. You might feel less sure of yourself and always feel unsure and unsafe. This could also make it harder for you to make and keep good interactions in the future. It is very important to protect your privacy and emotional health by being able to tell when someone is using guilt to control you. Finding this type of influence and dealing with it is a key part of building healthy relationships built on respect, real care and free choice instead of guilt and duty. Eighth, not enough real backing. The lack of real help is the eighth factor and it's something we can see in our own personal relationships. In relationships, you can often tell when someone doesn't care or isn't committed. They may be there when they need something from you, but when you need them, they are either not there or don't care. They only show up when it helps them. In these kinds of interactions, your goals, projects and challenges are likely to be met with coldness or only empty words of support. The other person might not fully back your plans, they might just wish you well or say they do. Support that is there is usually only on the surface and not from the heart. This makes the connection less close and makes you feel like you're not respected or loved. A real friend will always be there for you, not just when they need you. In this case, you often feel alone, especially when things are hard. Not having real support can also make you feel alone and useless. You know they won't really care about you, which can have a lot of bad effects on your mental health and happiness. If you don't believe in your own worth and feel like you don't deserve love, you may start to doubt yourself and lose trust in partnerships. The lack of help is due to their attention being on their own needs. They look at the relationship like a business deal and judge emotional input by how much money they can make from it. When people have this attitude, one side always gives while the other side only gets, it can make them feel undervalued and forgotten. Being aware of this lack of real help is important for figuring out what kind of connection you have with that person. For this to work, you need to be honest about how much exchange exists in your relationships. Finding and dealing with this lack of support is a key part of making sure you spend your time and energy on relationships that are caring and helpful. 9. The ability to make a choice. When dealing with people, we often come across another important warning sign, being ready to choose. It's clear there's a problem when someone can easily ask for help when they need it, but acts strange and hard to talk to when we do. Consider this situation. You are often able to assist others by replying to different requests. You might be ready to listen and offer mental support, do small jobs, or give them your full attention and care. People usually don't say anything when you're weak and need help though. They either don't answer your texts or calls, or they try to avoid talking about it. In that case, that's how they act. Because of this pattern of behavior, the amount of giving and getting is not balanced. It feels like you're walking down a street where all the care and commitment go in one direction, but not the other. This trend shows not only that you don't care about your wants and feelings, but that you are ignoring them on purpose. So, readiness to choose is like a mirror that shows an uncomfortable truth. The person is only there when it's convenient for them to be. 
If one person's wants are always ignored in a relationship, it can become like an uneven scale. An important first step is to face this truth. We need to ask ourselves if we are really in a relationship that benefits both sides, or if we are just a way for others to get what they need. We need to think about our personal limits and whether true exchange and respect are shared values in this relationship, because this situation makes us question our self-esteem and self-respect. Number 10. Not being there at important times. Finally, if someone sees you as nothing more than a means to an end, their silence at important times in your life is a clear sign. This becomes clear when they aren't there when you need someone to share the happiness of a success or find comfort during a hard time. Whether you're enjoying a big event or getting through a tough time in your life, these times need the support and company of people you care about. Think about being in one of those tough situations and expected support and understanding from a friend or partner. But instead of help, you find nothing. In a noticeable absence, that person offers only surface-level comfort or general words that sound more like a duty than a genuine act of concern. But this person usually gives unclear or silly reasons for being absent. They never try to make time for you when you need them most, maybe because they are busy with work or other relationships. These actions not only show that they don't respect you, but they also make it clear that you are not important to them. The fact that they are never around also shows a painful truth. This connection is mostly about getting what you want instead of real care. They aren't there when you need help, but they show up out of nowhere with a list of things they want and need from you. You feel used and undervalued in this commercial pattern. You can clearly feel the lack of a real and deep relationship when you have to face important times without their support and presence. In the long run, this can make you lose trust and feel alone. People should love and care for you for who you are, not just as a way to get what they want. This is true even if you are in a relationship. In this tough and difficult world, we often have to deal with a lot of problems but we need to form good habits if we want to get through these problems and live a more satisfying life. Marcus Aurelius, a famous Stoic philosopher, once said, It's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it. How you react and deal with problems determines your life, and every habit you have makes it possible for your life to have more value and depth. Now I'm going to talk about 10 habits that will help you become the best person you can be. Don't forget that this movie is a specific plan to help you become better and more sure of yourself. Start now to reach your full potential. First, it's important to master your body. People often think that mastering physical energy is something that only men can do. This is a strong force that, when used correctly, can be turned into amazing drive and efficiency. The important thing is to learn how to understand and deal with your physical urges in a healthy way. It's easy to get caught up in overindulging in our overly sexualized world. It's important to recognize and understand these natural urges, but it's also important to focus on how to use this energy. It's important to be aware of and understand these normal urges but what's really important is how you use this energy. Instead of doing something short-term like watching pornography, put your energy into something more positive. When physical energy is used in a focused and purposeful way, it can boost creativity, self-confidence, and mental strength. Managing your desires gives you power, clarity, and more drive. Using sexual energy to get things done Imagine that you are a young man who wants to become a creative person. You are under a lot of stress and pressure from work and everyday life on this trip. You might feel determined and energized at first in the morning, but it's easy for you to lose focus and drive over time. In this case, being able to handle your sexual energy can help you. You decide to focus on your creative work instead of watching porn 
or doing other things that give you short-term joy. By doing this, you can turn your physical energy into a strong source of inspiration and courage to produce original works of art. You have more confidence, stay focused on your goals, and do well at work in the end. Second, take charge of your thoughts. Mastering your mind is the first and most important thing you need to do to solve the problems you face in life. Too often, men's problems get too much for them and they start crying and complaining. This not only makes them less manly, but it also makes their problems worse. How big a man is depends on how well he can deal with problems, and if you fail at even small problems, you make yourself look smaller. If you don't control your mind, you'll cause problems for yourself because your thoughts determine what you do. Remember that your mind will definitely rule you if you don't take control of it. It will lead you to bad habits and useless activities. Being aware of your feelings is the key to controlling them. You gain power by focusing on the present and being okay with your feelings and thinking. This isn't a quick fix, but a basic habit. Know that the power in your mind is huge and can do both good and bad things. Taking care of the path your life is taking rests on it. Third, making money is an important part of being a real man. It's true that money can't buy happiness, but it can get rid of the things that are holding you back. In a world where money is king, not having stable finances can make you helpless. It is important to see making money as one of your main duties as a provider. Some people hide the fact that they are having money problems by saying that money is the cause of all bad or doesn't make people happy. But these are just ways for them to deal with their problems and make excuses for their lack of money. Do not fall into that trap. Instead, accept that learning how to make money is important for your personal growth. Don't forget that it's never too late to learn about money and make things better for yourself. Even though money might not be everything in the future, it can help you live a better life. 4. Work out every day. Working out is the secret tool that can change your life. It's not enough to just look good, you should also feel great and get smarter. Working out every day is a strong habit that can help you deal with problems and reach your goals. Not only do you improve your physical health when you work out, but you also remove brain fog. A good workout can help you deal with many problems that seem impossible to solve. When you work out, endorphins are released, which send air to all parts of your body and clear your thoughts. You don't have to go to the gym to do this exercise. A quick workout at home or a fast walk will do. The key is to be consistent. If you work exercise into your daily life, you'll find that many of the problems that used to bother you are now easier to fix. You'll be stronger, more focused, and ready to face the difficulties of life head on. Believe in the power of daily exercise. It's not just about getting in better shape, it's about becoming a better person. 5. Deal with one issue at a time. You should be mentally disciplined, have clear thinking through daily practice, and eat natural foods. Now it's time to deal with the problem in a practical way. You should only work on one issue at a time. When you try to handle everything at once, you may feel stressed and put things off. To get around this, write down one job the night before. If the problem is complicated, break it down into steps that you can handle. Setting a clear goal for the day will help you stay focused and get things done. It's important to know that fixing problems isn't about doing the biggest jobs first. It's about making steady progress. Small steps taken with purpose can lead to big successes. Let's say you're trying to get healthier but have lost your drive. In that case, don't try to make all the changes at once. Instead, be realistic. Change your food to start. The night before, choose natural and healthy foods for your breakfast the next morning. If working out every day seems hard, break it up into little steps. One idea is to start by working out every day for 15 minutes. You have a clear goal to start the day with. 
This helps you keep track of and keep up a good habit. Your health will get a lot better if you take small steps every day. By taking on daily tasks, you keep going and make steady progress on your path to better health. You keep going and get closer to your goals by taking on a new task every day. Don't forget that life is a path and that you are in charge of it. Keep building your path with these habits like loyal friends and may you succeed no matter what comes your way. Sixth, the way people eat natural foods. This trait is very important for a man's ability to deal with problems in life. It's time to give up junk food and start eating healthy foods. Men, on the other hand, are not kids or easily moved by hormones. We eat with purpose. What we eat has a direct effect on our future, both mentally and physically. Your mind and body have to work hard to handle the empty calories that come from eating processed and bad foods. This makes your mind less sharp and makes it harder to solve problems. The feeling of hunger, on the other hand, can be used as an ability to get more done. Being hungry while you work can sharpen your mind and help you solve problems better. Also, when you eat, pick things that are natural and full of nutrients. It's important to eat a balanced diet, and these natural foods should make up about 80% of your nutrition. They give your body and mind energy. You can save the last 20% for occasional treats, but be smart about what you buy. Instead of giving in to bad habits, dietary discipline teaches you to think about the value and benefits of real, natural foods, which makes you less hungry for unhealthy snacks. A healthy body will be better able to handle the difficulties of life. Imagine a young man who eats a lot of processed foods and fast food, as well as foods that are high in sugar and fat. Even though he has a stressful job and a lot of problems in his life, he makes bad food choices. His body has to break down a lot of empty calories from processed foods, which makes him less smart and less able to solve problems. That being said, he changes what he eats after a while. He starts to eat healthy, natural foods like fruits, veggies and whole grains. He also follows a strict diet and works even when he is hungry. Because of this, he thinks more clearly, can solve problems better and gets more done. With his new eating habits, he can use being hungry as a tool to make his life better and get through anything that comes his way. 7. Having a goal that is bigger than you. Men have always felt very happy and fulfilled when they worked hard on things that weren't their own personal hobbies. This has shown me the way through life, taught me to be patient when things get tough and sparked my desire to work until midnight. We need a strong spirit to commit to a cause bigger than ourselves in a world where most goals are about ourselves. Small things that bother you usually don't bother you as much when you have a selfless goal in mind. Living your life with such a goal gives you a better understanding of how your life fits into the bigger picture. Think about the life of Mahatma Gandhi, who is one of the most famous people in history. He was fighting for India's freedom from British colonial rule, which was a cause bigger than himself. Not only did he fight for the freedom of his own people, but he also stood for the non-violent philosophy and social harmony. Gandhi's path wasn't always smooth. He had to deal with trials, jail time, and even death threats. He was patient though, and never gave up on his goal. He finally won India's freedom and became a symbol of love and suffering for all people. Finding a cause bigger than yourself and dedicating your life to it is what Gandhi did. People remember him as one of the most important people in history and the great things he did. Think about the impact you want to leave behind to find your goal. How would you like people to remember you? What do you want to change about the world? Thinking about these questions can help you find your big goals. Once you know what it is, do everything you do every day with respect to complete this goal. Serving something bigger than yourself makes you happy, brings you satisfaction and improves balance in your life. Number eight, building grit and resilience. 
Life is unpredictable, and sometimes you have to deal with problems and setbacks that seem impossible to overcome. At this point, having courage and sticking with it are very important. A person's capacity for self-control and resilience in the face of adversity is determined by these traits. Instead of causing us to crumble under pressure, life's ups and downs test our resilience. Instead, we can use these problems as opportunities to get better, value them, and learn from your mistakes. Learning how to fight even when things go wrong is important. It takes courage and desire to develop an attitude of persistence and constant growth. Take these ideals to heart and use them as tools in your life. Even adversity can be turned into a chance for growth if you have courage and perseverance. Imagine you are a young person who wants to work in music. You've learned how to play the guitar and want to get really good at it. On your trip though, you face many problems. At first, you might not feel good enough and not even know how to play an easy tune. That's not what you do though. You decide to practice every day. You look at every problem you have with learning music as a chance to learn and get better. You look for advice from singers with more experience, take music lessons, and even write your own music. Over time, if you keep at it and are very determined, you start to get a lot better. People start to notice how good you are when you play more difficult pieces of music. You might even get to play in front of a big crowd one day. It looks like your strength and determination have helped you get better at singing and reach your personal goals. This shows that even the hardest things in life can be turned into chances to learn and succeed. 9. Doing as few pointless things as possible in this digital world. Many attention-getting apps and platforms like social media, online viewing and video games make it hard to cut down on useless activities in the digital age, even though they have many benefits. It gives you adrenaline right away, but it doesn't help you in the long run. While it's fine to do these things for fun and relaxing, spending too much time on them can make you less productive and less motivated. The key is to figure out what user-generated content is and how much time you spend on it. In your idle time, you should try to be more creative. Life isn't fancy about time itself, but about how we choose to spend it. Spend your time on things that will help you in the long run, like learning new skills, growing your knowledge, making new friends, and helping other people. You can grow as a person by learning to mix free time with things that have a reason. Cutting down on useless activities will give you more time to work on yourself. We often face difficult and stressful events in our daily lives. One example is going through a bad thing at work, like losing a big job. Stoic philosophy tells us to deal with our feelings and accept change instead of getting angry and worried. We can learn to pay attention to the things we can change, like how we respond and what we can learn from the event. This helps us keep our emotions in check and keep us from getting overwhelmed by bad feelings. Tenth, strive for greatness. The goal of greatness is the sum of all the lessons that have come before it. It's a promise to keep pushing your own style in all areas of your life, whether they are mental, spiritual, emotional, or physical. It takes determination, focus, energy, and a strong desire to grow as a person. Excellence doesn't mean being better than other people. It means always being better than your own standards. Take the example of a sports fan who wants to get in better shape. You decide to run the same distance every day. Your comfort zone doesn't hold you back. Instead, you push yourself and run farther. You learn how to eat well and make time to exercise as well. Your health, spirit and soul are getting better every day. The thrill of seeing yourself get better the pride in your own accomplishments and the happiness in your own growth are all strong motivators. This has a good effect on both your home and professional life. So push yourself to leave your comfort zone, learn something new, get better at something you already know or quit a bad habit. Our goal is not to be perfect every day, but to get better every day 
and grow a little more every day. There is no better feeling than making progress, being satisfied with your growth and being happy with your own personal growth. Try to feel that way and look for it. Getting into the habit of always looking for ways to do things better will help you become the best version of yourself. Have you ever felt like you had to live up to social standards or stuck in a cycle of anxiety because of things you couldn't change? If so, I want you to know that you are not alone. There are a lot of things in life that we worry about too much and may not be as important as we think they are. But have you ever thought about whether there is a way out of this vortex, a way to go through life without stress? There is a psychological method that can lead to a better and more fulfilling life, and I will look into it in depth. The art of not caring is the name for this method. Not being interested in or rude to other people is not the point. The point is to care about what's important, the things we can control, and let go of the rest. First, learn how to say no. If you think about it philosophically, what do you think the idea of not caring means? Not worrying about someone, something, or an event does not mean being totally removed or not caring about it at all. Freeing yourself from fear, social pressure, and worries about the unknown is what it's about. Worries we can't change and fear of what other people will think of us. The art of not worrying teaches us to concentrate on our actions, responses and attitudes rather than wasting our thoughts and feelings on things we can't change. Being aware of our boundaries and choosing what is truly important to say yes to and what is not is what it means. To master the art of not caring what other people think, you need to learn how to say no. It helps us keep our personal space, mental health and self-esteem safe, like a strong shield. People can force their will on you when you can't say no to requests or promises that you don't want to make. This not only drains your energy, but also leaves you open to people who might not want what's best for you. Saying no is a big sign that you respect yourself and trust your own decision. It shows that you value your time and resources and focus on what's important to you instead of trying to please everyone to get approval from other people. You take back control of your life and depend less on other people's views when you say no to requests that don't fit with your values or wants. Saying no helps you set limits, stay focused on your goals and eventually stop trying to get acceptance all the time. Adopting the power of no is a key step toward freedom from other people's influences on the path of self-discovery and personal growth. It encourages independence so you can make choices based on your own ideas and hobbies instead of what other people want you to do. It can also help our relationships if we learn how to say no in a nice but strong way. Why do I talk about being polite? Because being polite in conversation not only shows that we value other people, but it also shows what kind of person we are. A polite and kind refuse not only keeps the connection going, but it also makes us look like someone who can communicate well and take responsibility. Being polite when we say no also helps others understand that our choice is not a rejection of them or a lack of respect for them, but because of our own goals and choices in that moment. This makes it easier for everyone to understand each other and avoids confusion. Being nice and refusing something shows that we care about more than just our own needs. It shows that we care about how others feel and respond. This helps people talk to each other in a way that makes everyone feel accepted and valued. In the end, being able to politely say no also helps us gain self-respect and independence. It shows up when you can make strong, independent choices that don't hurt other people or hurt important relationships. Also, saying no helps you stay strong-willed and sure of your choices. Being clear about what you can and cannot accept makes you more likely to live your life the way you want to, not the way other people expect you to. This not only makes you feel better about yourself and more at ease, 
but it also makes other people feel like they have the courage to live honestly and with confidence around you. Saying no is important to protect your personal space and time in today's world, where standards and social pressure are always rising. By concentrating on doing what's best for you, it not only helps to reduce stress and tiredness, but also keeps life balanced and harmonious. You not only make your own mental and physical health better, but you also help make the world a healthier place to live. Finally, saying no not only helps you learn how to listen better and understand yourself better, it also gives you more confidence and freedom to make your own choices. You are actually learning to trust and accept your choices when you choose not to do things or meet responsibilities that don't fit with your values or goals. This not only helps you figure out what's important and go after it, but it also makes you stronger and more independent. Also, learning to say no is a big part of having good relationships with other people and with yourself. You learn not to put too much pressure on yourself to do everything that other people ask or expect of you. Instead, you take charge of your own personal space, time and energy and protect them. In this setting, you can grow in all areas of your life, including your personal and professional life. Let me tell you a story about David, an office worker, to help you understand how to say no. David, a graphic artist, felt like he had too much to do because he never turned down extra work. When his boss asked him to do extra work over the weekend, he politely said no and said he needed to balance work and personal life. David suggested that the work be split up among other co-workers so that the project could be finished without hurting his own schedule. David felt more in charge of his work and life, which made him less stressed and raised his self-esteem. His boss liked how professional he was. To sum up, learning how to say no is an important part of growing as a person. The most important thing is that it helps you live a fulfilling life that is true to your ideals and strengths. Managing your time and work well is important, but this skill is also important for keeping your mind healthy and living a calm, happy life. Stop asking for permission, number two. Before we get to point two, I want to tell you to stop looking for permission in life. Before making choices about ourselves, many of us tend to ask others for permission first. A lot of the time, when we want to make sure we made the right choice, we ask family, friends, or other people we know for their opinion. That being said, this can hurt more than help. We unintentionally show that we don't trust our own judgment when we ask for permission. Even worse, when we change the balance of power, we give other people the power to say yes or no to our wants. When they have the chance, people naturally like to be in charge. So, asking for permission can lead to unwanted meddling and stop you from growing as a person. I implore you to have the courage to do the following to escape this circle of self-limitation. First, make it clear what's important to you. Taking the time to think about your beliefs, long-term goals and dreams is important. You will find it easy to make choices when you know exactly what you want when you understand yourself. In addition to knowing yourself, learn how to listen to yourself. Our feelings and instincts can sometimes give us deep insights into what is best. Learn to tell the difference between other people's helpful ideas and tips and just noise. The next step is to stop being afraid of failing and start taking chances. Giving up is not a sign of weakness, it's a way to learn and get better. If you don't fear failing, you'll be more willing to try new things and make choices without worrying about what other people will think. Finally, make sure you're surrounded by upbeat and helpful people. Your surroundings can have a big effect on how you feel about your own self-worth. You'll feel stronger and more prepared to face challenges without needing approval from others when you're surrounded by people who believe in your skills and give you the courage to achieve your personal goals. Being self-aware, having the courage to take chances and having support from those around you 
will help you find the road of freedom and autonomy, where all of your choices and actions come from you and represent who you are and what you believe in. People tend to want other people's approval because they need it deeply and have been afraid of being rejected or criticized since they were young. We are taught to follow social norms and other people's demands, which makes us often rely on outside approval for every choice and action we make. This habit not only makes it harder to make decisions on our own, but it also stops us from growing as people and becoming more self-aware. This constant need to be liked shows up in our personal and professional relationships when we want to be respected by co-workers, friends and even family. But it's important to remember that even though other people's comments and suggestions can be useful, they shouldn't be the only things that guide our actions and choices. We need to learn the difference between taking good advice into account and relying on other people's support for everything. We need to have a strong sense of self-worth and trust in order to become independent in our thoughts and actions. Being able to make good decisions and having clear goals and values in life are two ways to do this. Truly being free and in charge of our own lives starts when we start to trust ourselves and not depend on other people's acceptance. As we go through this journey, it's important to learn to love and accept ourselves, flaws and all. This will help us make decisions on our own and give us more confidence in our daily lives. Also, asking for permission all the time can make you feel less independent and lower your self-esteem. We lose faith in ourselves and our ability to handle life's problems when we let other people decide what to do. Building up self-reliance and trust is what needs to be done. Realizing your skills, accepting your weaknesses and knowing it's okay to make mistakes are all parts of this. Making mistakes is an important part of learning and growing as a person. The first and most important thing you can do to become more independent is to set and work towards small but important personal goals. Begin with little things that are simple to do. On the other hand, this can help you act on your own without needing other people's permission or agreement. Like Jack, who chose to learn how to swim because he liked sports, it might be a good idea. The first thing he did was learn how to float and stand underwater. He kept going even though it was hard at first and he was afraid of water. Jack set aside time every week to work on his swimming. To keep up a good habit, he slowly got better at things until he learned how to swim. No matter how small, each step Jack took toward learning to swim showed how independent and confident he was. Jack was proud of himself for getting over his fear of water and learning a new skill, which made him feel better about himself. Regularly thinking about yourself is an important part of learning to think for yourself. Take some time to think about what you stand for, what you value most, and what gives your life real meaning. This process helps you learn more about yourself, which lets you make choices that are more in line with who you really are. This deep understanding of yourself will guide every choice you make, making sure they are in line with your true self and not affected by outside factors. Reflecting on yourself also helps you find and get past psychological blocks that might be stopping you from becoming more independent. This means facing your fears, worries and bad thoughts that can make you less sure of yourself and less able to make decisions. You will be better at making choices and acting on your own if you accept and get through these psychological hurdles. Lastly, it's important to make and keep a support network of trusted friends, co-workers or family members who encourage and support your freedom. People in your support network can give you helpful feedback without forcing you to make choices they don't agree with. Be patient on your way to becoming self-reliant and know that it will happen over time. This will not only help you make better choices, but it will also make you stronger and more sure of yourself. Third, come up with your own idea of what success means to you. Understanding what success means to you 
is a life-changing process that can help you break free from social norms. In a world where traditional ideas about what success looks like are common, it's important to break these ideas and make your own way. Being successful isn't a set idea. It's very personal and depends on your own goals and ideals. Your life will have more meaning and depth if you put success in your own words. This helps you keep your attention on what's important to you and not get sidetracked by trying to reach someone else's idea of success. Whether it's reaching a certain job goal, getting good at a certain skill, or making connections with people that matter, your description should include all of your interests and goals. Not only does describing success help you set personal goals and values, it also helps you make a clear plan to go after it. It helps you understand the exact steps you need to take to reach your goals and becomes a guide for your path. This gives you confidence and helps you focus on the most important things so you can reach your goals on your own terms. By setting your own standards for success, you also remove yourself from other people's views and judgments. You no longer need outside approval because you know what success means to you. This confidence gives you the power to drive yourself and work harder toward your goals without worrying about what other people think. This means that you are completely in charge of your path and don't let outside factors affect the choices you make. Remember that only you can write your own success story. You don't have to follow the rules and ideals that society has set. When you accept and talk about your own idea of success, you start an important journey to honor yourself and follow a deep-seated wish in your heart. This journey isn't just about getting what you want out of life. It's also about building a life that makes you happy and true to yourself. You will live your life honestly and enjoy each moment in your own special way if you dare to define success on your own terms. Allow me to tell you about Alex's luck. Ever since he was a kid, Alex has entered and won many small prizes in drawing contests in his area. His friends and family have always praised him for his artistic ability and urged him to enter national events or pursue a job as a professional artist. Alex loves art, but charity work and helping other people are even more important to him. Alex has chosen that instead of becoming famous and having artistic success, he will find real success in helping others and doing good things in the world. He has spent a lot of time and energy making art programs for kids who don't have much, and he has also done charity work to help people in need. For Alex, success doesn't mean getting art awards or becoming a popular artist. It means making other people's lives better and making the community around him stronger don't be afraid to set your own success standards and goals. That's how you'll make your life story truly unique and important. Number four, make a smart choice. We can only do so much in life because we all care about different things. It's important to choose for ourselves what's important and where we should put our attention. A lot of the time, we care too much about what random people, unimportant trends, or internet approval that doesn't matter think. These things that take our attention away from our goals, dreams, and important personal growth often lead us wrong and make us lose focus. Take a moment to think about this. When we focus too much on small things, we might forget about the things that really matter in our lives. This makes us want to be average, which is something we should try to avoid. If we let unimportant thoughts and views take over our minds, we might not be able to concentrate on important problems and bright dreams. Now is the time to work on improving ourselves, take advantage of chances, and follow our hobbies. We can make sure we don't miss the chance to thrive and shine by reducing these small and unimportant things. So, ask yourself, what am I putting my time and effort into? Decide for sure what's important to you and give it some thought before letting the clouds of distractions fall on your way. This not only helps you stay focused, but it also helps you make your own path, 
one that is marked by accomplishments and being different, it's important to make smart decisions so that other people's views don't affect you. To do this, we should put our interests, dreams and personal growth first. Strangers' views lose their power over our lives over time when we focus all of our energy and soul on important goals and dreams. Imagine that you are an enthusiastic artist who wants to make a name for yourself. At first, you were only interested in what other people thought and how many likes you had on social media. You got sidetracked from your goals, but after a while, you chose to stop thinking about what other people thought and just focus on learning and making things. Because of this, you created your own style and became known in the art world. I want to remember you through the above example that time is valuable and limited, and every minute we waste worrying about unimportant opinions is a minute we lose on our way to success and happiness. So, make smart decisions and put your energy and time into the things that really matter in life. Always keep in mind that the choices you make today will lead you to an exciting tomorrow. Don't let unimportant things and odd views take you away from your real dreams and goals. Do not be afraid to start your journey. Lead it in the way you really want and believe in. Fifth, don't be scared. In a society that values uniformity, the fear of failing or facing other people can hold you back. This is why being bold is an important life concept. Being brave is the first thing that you need to do to stop caring what other people think. Know this, you can't make everyone happy and trying to do so will only stop you from growing and expressing yourself. Standing up for yourself with courage when you say what you really think shows that you are strong inside and that you have strong morals. It is important to understand that trying to please everyone can make you less unique and stop you from reaching your full potential. This knowledge is important because it frees you from having to depend on other people's opinions to decide how valuable you are. You can be sure that not everyone will agree with you. There may even be criticism or resistance. But it's important not to let these views change how confident and determined you are. Being sure that you can live your life according to your ideals and beliefs is a sign of inner power. You don't have to try to please everyone. Instead, focus on being your best self and staying true to the road you believe in. Have the courage to go your own way. Just like a cat that doesn't care what the other animals think, that's how you show how determined and strong you are. This gives you the freedom to follow your dreams and interests without worrying about what other people will think or what society says. This shows that you are strong and believe in your own worth while also protecting your privacy and freedom. Step out on your own and enjoy the freedom and happiness that comes with it. It shows authenticity and dedication to your personal values to stand up for what you believe in. This can mean facing resistance or making friends along the way, but it's an important part of building a useful and successful life. This action not only confirms who you really are, but it also makes it clear that you don't give in to outside pressure or the need for support from everyone. Instead, you put personal growth ideals and your journey ahead of everything else. For instance, you might decide not to marry at the normal age because that's not what society expects of you. Instead, you might choose to stay single or study abroad and see the world. However, you choose to live your life the way you want to, even though your family and friends may put pressure on you to get married or start a stable job sooner. Not only do you live your life without fear or guilt, but you also know that you can't please everyone you meet. This could give you a lot of freedom and happiness. You can be happy by following your interests and getting what you want out of life without worrying about what other people think. Being brave can help you live an interesting and meaningful life where you follow your gut feelings and personal goals instead of trying to fit in with other people. Don't be afraid to face the fear of being criticized or letting other people down. Think of it as the first, most important step on your path to living a life on your own terms 
and making the future based on your beliefs and courage. Sixth, love yourself. Many people don't give loving yourself enough credit. They think it's something that only happens in self-help books or at special meditation camps. But the truth is that liking yourself is an important part of growing as a person and building mental resilience. You should know that loving yourself doesn't mean you're cocky or conceited. It means you really value your mental health and worth. Setting healthy limits, being able to say no when you need to, and putting your own goals and ideals first are all easy when you love yourself. Other people's opinions don't affect you because your self-esteem isn't based on what other people say. Self-love helps you make choices that are in line with who you really are instead of always trying to fit in or get support from other people. In addition to making you happy with who you are, this sets you up for a healthy and balanced life. When you love yourself, you're better able to deal with problems and turn stress and uncertainty into chances to grow and improve yourself. Self-satisfaction or ego are not signs of loving yourself. Instead, loving yourself means learning, accepting and improving yourself every day. You learn to understand and listen to your own feelings, which helps you care about other people. Self-love is also important because it helps you see how important it is to live your own life without biases or limits you put on yourself. Your way of thinking changes and you become more open to adapting and accepting change. This is good for your own growth and for the people around you. Additionally, self-love strengthens your resilience and helps you quickly bounce back from mistakes and criticism. It gives you the emotional strength to deal with the problems in life, knowing that your sense of self-worth doesn't change based on events or outside approval. Love for yourself builds confidence and self-esteem, which is important because it lets you handle life's ups and downs with strength. When you love and accept yourself, you stop relying on other people's opinions or support to tell you how valuable you are. In turn, this helps you see yourself more objectively, understanding that every mistake is an opportunity to learn and grow. Additionally, liking yourself helps you set healthy limits in your interactions with other people. You learn how to say no when you need to and defend yourself against being hurt or used. To love and care for yourself, you need to do things like eat well, exercise and give yourself time to rest and recover. Self-love not only makes you stronger on the inside, but it also makes the world a better place by spreading happiness and helping you make healthy, helpful connections with others. It's more important than anything else to love yourself. Let me tell you Tom's story if you don't know where to begin. Tom was a recent college graduate who felt like he had to be great in every way. Tom noticed he was being too hard on himself and felt like he had to do well at everything, from work to relationships. Tom made some changes after a while. He loved and took better care of himself more. He made time every day for personal activities like yoga and reading, ate well, and learned to say no to work that was too much for him. Tom also stopped comparing himself to other people and began writing in a diary to have a better outlook on life. He learned the value of self-love and became more confident and happy as a result. Most importantly, you need to know that liking yourself isn't selfish. It's a way to protect yourself and grow as a person. When you love yourself, you feed your mind and spirit, which helps you rise and become the best version of yourself. You will learn about yourself and learn to accept yourself on this trip, which will help you live a real and satisfying life. Do not ever doubt the strength of self-love. It is the key to a strong and happy life. Seventh, you'll die soon. This may sound pretty heavy, but it's a fact that we all have to face at some point. You need to accept that we will leave this world for good at some point. We should remember that our short time on Earth is a lesson to put what really matters first. When you get caught up in other people's bad ideas, remember how short life is. Life is a gift that should not be wasted on thinking about what other people will say about you. 
This is unfair to yourself. You should know that people who constantly criticize or question you will finally go away, and so will their views. You should keep your mind on your goals, your interest, and your own growth. No matter what other people think, use your time to make your life something you can be proud of. Take comfort in the fact that your journey is unique and based on your own decisions. Your ideals and goals should guide your way. It's a path to authenticity and strength to stop caring what other people think. It's also important to keep in mind that every time and event, no matter how small, has its own worth. No matter how big or small the joy or struggle, live each day fully and be thankful for it all. It's not enough to just reach your big goals in life. You need to find meaning and happiness along the way. Don't forget that you only need to show something to yourself. No one but you can decide how much you're worth. Last but not least, take every chance to learn, love, and do things that make you feel alive and happy. That's how you write your own story, one that people will always want to hear and remember. Each day brings you new options and problems to solve. How you handle these will determine the course of your story. Don't forget that every problem is a chance to learn and grow. Don't forget that happiness is a process, not a goal. Each step in life is important and has its own meaning. Every day, be thankful, happy, and open to what comes your way. This is how you make a story that is both special and important, one that you'll be happy to tell your children and grandchildren. Let's say you're Leo, a young biology expert whose family and friends didn't believe in his job choice. Even though there was pressure, he kept following his love for biology. Through study and going to workshops, Leo slowly made a name for himself in his field. In the end, he had a great deal of success, proved himself to the science community, and showed how important it is to live a true life with personal goals and desire. Finally, keep in mind that there are many opinions in the world, but not all of them matter. You have real power when you care about things that are in line with your morals and goals. If you follow these seven important lessons, you can stop trying to please other people and focus on what really counts in your life. Hold on to your own opinion, be selective about where you put your energy, and learn to say no when you need to. So, go forward with faith, tune out the noise, and live your life as it really is. Because in the end, what counts is how you feel about yourself. As we draw this guide to a close, it's important to reflect on the journey we've embarked upon together. Through the exploration of Stoicism, we've uncovered timeless wisdom that offers a beacon of light in navigating life's complexities. The principles and practices laid out in these pages are more than just philosophical ideals. They are practical tools designed to foster resilience, peace, and personal freedom in the face of life's inevitable challenges. Remember, the path to incorporating Stoic principles into your life is a personal and ongoing journey. It's about progress, not perfection. As you continue to apply these teachings, you'll likely find that your perspective on life's difficulties begins to shift. What once seemed insurmountable may now appear manageable and perhaps even opportunities for growth and development. Embrace the moments of reflection, the exercises, and the mindfulness practices introduced here as part of your daily routine. Allow them to guide you in cultivating a tranquil mind, a virtuous character, and a life aligned with your deepest values. The journey towards Stoic wisdom is a rewarding one, filled with insights and transformations that extend far beyond the pages of this guide. As you move forward, carry with you the knowledge that you have the tools to face whatever life throws your way with grace and composure. Let the teachings of Stoicism be a constant companion, reminding you of the power of perspective, the importance of accepting what you cannot change, and the endless potential for growth within. 
Thank you for allowing us to accompany you on this journey towards a more stoic, peaceful, and fulfilling life. May you continue to explore, learn, and grow, embracing each day with a renewed sense of purpose, resilience, and serenity. Remember, the pursuit of personal freedom and inner peace is a lifelong endeavor, one that is as rewarding as it is transformative.